can support us completed novel house in link below clip. Thank you for coming and love the sharing story chapter 181, John Yi's Taiji Fist. First day. Third day. Fifth day. After a week, John Yi's analysis of the three kingdoms came to an end. With analysis of the three kingdoms finished, what's there to watch in the future? That's right. Historical segments in the future will not be watchable. It's such a good program. What a pity. I still hope teacher Zhong Yi will carry on lecturing. Even if it's not the three kingdoms, something else would do, too. Teacher Zhong already doesn't care if it's winter, summer, spring or fall. He has retired into the forest. I don't believe that one bit. I'm waiting for teacher Zhong Yi to come out of the mountains. No television station wants teacher Zhong, so how is he going to make a reappearance? Online topics on Zhong Yi had been quiet for many days, but with analysis of the Three Kingdoms ending, there were discussions once again. In the afternoon, after the last episode was broadcast, ex colleague Xiao Lu called, Teacher Zhong, the program has ended. Brother, who wanted me to let you know? Zhong Yi was bored at home, watching television, how were the ratings? The last few episodes maintained a very high standard. Even the ratings for Monday to Friday's episodes were about 6.4%. During the weekend, it even reached as high as 8.97%. Although it was quite unfortunate that it did not break 9% in the end, historical and educative segments are not as popular, so it can't compare with variety shows. So this rating is already quite heaven-defying. It's the hottest new segment in our Beijing television station's arts channel. It even ranks high amongst all the television station's programs. Xiao Lu told Zhong Yi. Zhong Yi acknowledged, has the new season been fixed? It has been recorded. Upon saying this, Xiao Lu was a bit embarrassed. With you gone, we had no choice but to invite a history professor. The next episode talks about an ancient poet. It will discuss about his life from the moment he was born until he died. I also heard him when recording the first episode. It was SOSO. SOSO? Zhong Yi had already treated Lecture Room as his own child. No matter what, even the name of the program was given by him, so he was very concerned. Xiao Lu said helplessly, that's right. It's definitely incomparable to you. I would only say it barely makes the cut. With a pause, she asked, how about you? About work. Zhong Yi laughed, I haven't found any yet. Xiao Lu said angrily, how can that be? Do they not have eyes? How can't it be? Not a single person in related industries have contacted me over the past week. I am also not worried. I can also take the time to take a break. After exchanging a few more words, Zhong Yi hung up. Not worried? That was definitely a lie. The moment analysis of the three kingdoms ended, it meant that he had no more opportunities to show his face. The increase in his game reputation points would be minimal. And Zhong Yi, who only wanted to become a top star, knew that once his exposure was lowered, it would greatly affect his popularity. He would then gradually disappear from the public's view. Don't think too much about how the netizens and fans shout Zhong Yi's name daily. Things like supporting him for a lifetime? If Zhong Yi were to really stay quiet for a month or two, it was likely that most people would even forget his name. Celebrities did not rely on the heat of the moment, but a prolonged period of sustained exposure. This was the core essence needed in maintaining or increasing one's popularity. He checked the official site of the celebrity rankings. Zhong Yi was still an E-list celebrity, but after the past few days of exposure, he had already reached the forefront of the E-list ranks, ranking fourth. A local TV variety program's host was ranked ahead of him. His ratings were even higher than Zhong Yi's. Placed second was an actor. He had previously acted in a pretty popular TV series, and had quite a few works. He mainly acted as a supporting character, but that was last year. This actor had actually dropped from being a D-list celebrity to an E-list celebrity, as he did not have any good works this year. The person ranked first amongst the E-list celebrities was a woman. She was a singer and considered a rookie. She had recently released an album with pretty good sales. She had also acted in a movie. If he overtook them, then Zhong Yi would enter the ranks of D-list celebrities. 
Although D and E list celebrities should not be demarcated like that, with the rankings just for reference, and a comprehensive rating a person's influence and popularity, everyone acknowledged it, be it official entities or civilians. So this was the most authoritative statistic. And from the scores, Zhong Yi would clearly not be able to overtake them. With analysis of the three kingdoms ended, Zhong Yi's rating scores were already dropping. Although it was minimal, the trend was as such. It reflected Zhong Yi's future decline in popularity and visibility. How could he not be worried? Zhong Yi had still not thought of the path he should walk on for the time being. He was only hoping to maintain his current popularity. And for that, he needed to do something. He had to mess things up. He definitely had to mess something up. This was Zhong Yi's first reaction. While hungry, Zhong Yi looked at his reputation points in his game ring. There was slightly more than 2 million reputation points. Clearly, it was the accumulation of this week's analysis of the three kingdoms. Leaving a few hundred thousand as backup, Zhong Yi was still thinking about the Taiji Fist skill books. He ended up going to the merchant shop and bought another two experience books with two million reputation points. Flipping it open. Eating it. The experience had been absorbed by him. However, it was the same this time, too. Zhong Yi still did not feel any changes. He tried his best to recall, but not a single Taiji Fist move appeared. All he had were moves and actions from Taekwondo, such as side kicks and cross kicks. There was no Taiji Fist. It made him depressed. With the experience eaten, there definitely were some effects. However, without any moves or styles, how was he to use it? After using his brain so much, Zhong Yi became more hungry. Having not eaten breakfast and lunch because he was lazy to go downstairs, he was really feeling the pangs of hunger. It was also too late for Zhong Yi to buy Lamian two streets away. He could only use his usual tactic and walked out the door towards the landlady's house. Ding dong. He pressed the doorbell. It took a long while before the door opened, revealing Chen Chen's little head. She was small in size. Clearly, she had tiptoed to reach the door handle. After she opened the door, she was even panting. Zhong Yi said in a friendly manner, Chen Chen, where's your aunt? Chen Chen said with a straight face, my aunt isn't home. She went out jogging. Saying that, she was planning on closing the door. Zhong Yi took the opportunity to step in, it's even better that she's not around. I'm not looking for her. Upon entering the house, he did not stand on ceremony. He ran straight to the kitchen to churn through it. Finally, he found two plates of leftovers in the refrigerator. One of them was a plate of braised beef, while the other was a plate of fried celery. Without saying a word, he poked through the wrap with a toothpick to let it breathe. Then he threw it into the microwave and let it spin for two minutes. When it came out, it was steaming hot. Chen Chen asked in surprise, what are you doing? Zhong Yi did not care about talking. As he drew in the fragrance, he sat at the dining table and found a pair of chopsticks to eat in a quick manner. The sound of keys rang. The door was open from the outside. Ariel I mean was dressed in sportswear today. Her top was a striped white vest worn by hurdle athletes. Her pair of pants was a training pants and looked more baggy. However, at this moment, her body was wet from her sweat. Drops of sweat were dripping down her hair. This appearance made her look mature and attractive. Zhong Yi already knew Big Sis Ariel was a martial arts practitioner, so maintaining her physical fitness and strength was key so she had went out on a run in the afternoon. Kid, why are you here? Ario I mean was covered in sweat, but she was not short of breath. Her breaths were still calm, and she did not look tired in any way. Chen Chen covered her forehead like an adult, the devil has entered the village. Ario I mean was amused by her niece, what has the devil swept? A plate of beef, a plate of fried parsley and a bowl of rice, Chen Chen reported. Zhong Yi nearly spat out the food from his mouth when he heard her description, who's the devil? These two women, one's tongue was sharper than the other. I graduated from a broadcasting major? It was more like the two of you were broadcasting majors. You only know to scrounge for food all day and do not know how to find a job. Rotten kid, you have been idle at home for a week, right? Ario I mean glanced at him, wash the dishes in a while. 
Zhong Yi had already finished eating. There was nothing left from the two plates and bowl of rice. He rubbed his belly and burped. He could not help but sweep his gaze across the landlady's wet vest. Whether it was because she knew she would sweat or because it was uncomfortable, the landlady had not worn a bra. From the clues, he could tell. However, despite not wearing any underwear, Raoi Min's breasts still appeared large, Heavenly Queen Jong's were large and ample. Raoi Min's were large and straight. Both had their merits and their individual beauty. Zhong Yi acted dead after eating his fill, I can't wash the dishes. I'm too full. I can't move. Upon hearing this, Ari Oi Min, who was taking off her shoes, kicked up and the sneaker on her beautiful foot came shooting straight at Zhong Yi. Hurry up and go. Shua. The shoe flew across like lightning. Zhong Yi did not have any time to react, and upon seeing it flying towards him, without a thought, he subconsciously lifted his leg to block. But when he stretched out his leg, the movement in his leg changed. It was like a reflex action. When Zhong Yi's leg lifted, the tip of his foot angled and managed to meet the flying shoe. Then, with his ankle trembling in a manner he could not comprehend, he seemed to draw a circle in midair and reduce the force in Raoi Min's shoe. And with the bottom of Zhong Yi's foot lifting up again, the shoe flew back along its original trajectory. Bada! It landed exactly where Raoi Min's foot was. Raoi Min exclaimed. Chen Chen also looked at Zhong Yi in surprise. Zhong Yi was dumbfounded. What had happened? This set of actions was like flowing water. Zhong Yi's feet were as if they were dancing. A kick, a roll and a shot caused the shoe to return along its original trajectory. This was, Taiji? This bro really knows the Taiji fist? Chen Chen could not tell what move Zhong Yi had used. She only found it fascinating and beautiful. The landlady had not looked at him after kicking her shoe. She was busy changing into slippers, so she had not seen Zhong Yi's motions, your taekwondo level has increased. Zhong Yi chuckled and did not speak the truth, indeed. As a neighbor of Big Sis Rao, being influenced by a martial arts master all this time, there would definitely be some improvements. Rao I mean smiled. That's something I like to hear. Chen Chen exposed him, bootlicker. Aunt, he doesn't want to wash the dishes. Zhong Yi. This wicked child. How does she know what I'm thinking? In the end, Zhong Yi had to reluctantly wash the dishes. Actually, he was just engaging in idle banter. After scrounging for food, it was only appropriate for him to wash the dishes. Hence, to allow him to scrounge for food and drink in the future, Zhong Yi still did the house chores. While he was hard at work in the kitchen, his heart was in turmoil. The Taiji fist skill books were not ineffective. Look at those moves just now. Too cool. Too beautiful. Zhong Yi looked outside the kitchen. Seeing that Rao I mean and Chen Chen were not around, he picked up a bowl and played with the bowl. He wanted to try it again. But this time, it was the same result as the numerous attempts he had before. There was no effect, and he nearly dropped the bowl. Could the Taiji fist skill be too high level for him? Hence, he was unable to use the moves as he wished, like he did with Taekwondo? It could only be used on sudden inspiration? Damn, why does it sound like I'm doing you from Jin Yong's novel? Despite having the skill of the Six Meridian Divine Sword, he could not use it usually. Isn't this a problem? Chapter 182, Zhong Yi is publishing another book. Around 2 p.m. Chen Chen needed her afternoon nap, so Rao I mean chased Zhong Yi out of the house. Having filled his stomach, he made a burp of satisfaction and headed for his apartment. When he had mostly digested his food, Zhong Yi got changed into his sports attire and a pair of sneakers, as he did not have running shoes. He had to make do with what he had and headed out for a run, just like Rao I mean. One round. Three rounds. He ran around the neighborhood to improve his fitness. Zhong Yi thought that his Taiji fist could not be used effectively because his body could not keep up with the skill. Like Taekwondo, he had the experience and movements in his head, but he could not execute the moves to its full potential. He lacked strength, reaction speed, and stamina. When he fought Wang Center, his technical skill was slightly better, but yet he was at the disadvantage and on the losing end. 
In the end, he had to use the consumable item, health potion, that he had received from the lottery to turn the tables around. Zhong Yi had learned his lesson. Just Kung Fu alone doesn't cut it. His body had to match up, too. For instance, for Taiji Fist, even if he ate 1,000 Taiji experience books, as long as his physical strength remained the same, not even 10,000 experience books would enable him to do what Rao I mean did, slicing the steel scissors. He needed to train. This had to go through the process and he had to remain determined. In the future, he would have to run and do some push-ups every day. After running for over an hour, Zhong Yi headed home, drenched in sweat. Just as he entered through the door, the phone in his pocket started ringing. Hello, who is this? Zhong Yi said, catching his breath. Hello, teacher Zhong. We are from the North Chinese Youth and Children's Publishing House. It was a middle-aged man's voice on the other side. It sounded rather hoarse. Zhong Yi stayed on the phone as he went into the toilet to grab a towel to wipe off his sweat, oh, I'm sorry, but my fairy tale stories copyrights have all been sold. The middle-aged man was a little stunned, but said cheerfully, we are not calling regarding your fairy tales. We know that your fairy tales have already been published by the Beijing Education Publishing Firm. I'm looking for you to discuss about other publication opportunities. To my understanding, some of your written works and your modern poems have not been published yet, right? If the copyright is not in your hands, then we will forget about it. But I don't see any publications in the market now. Zhong Yi kept silent for a bit and threw down his towel, my poems? Yes. We want to do a compilation for you, a Zhong Yi's compilation, that has all your written works and poems, including your couplets. The middle-aged man said, let's meet up for a chat. Or you can visit our publication house. This interested John Yi. He had been worried about being out of a job and not having enough exposure to maintain his popularity since the afternoon. But good news came knocking on his door. John Yi had not thought of publishing a compilation of his works before. He knew that it was difficult. Which of the authors, who had ever released a compilation, was not well known? Of course, some unknown authors had also released compilations before. They either bought their way in or depended on their network, but the sales were too poor. They were better off not releasing it. Zhong Yi always believed that if he wanted to publish his poetry compilation, the biggest hurdle was that he started too late. It had only been a few months and his works only numbered in the dozens. What was the concept of having a dozen poems? Even if they increased the font and put a poem on each page, he would only have a dozen pages. Ignoring the publication of a book, even for a pamphlet, it was too thin. Zhong Yi also did not want to bring over all the classic poems from his previous world in one shot. Whenever he used one, there was one less. He needed to keep them on the blade, so he gave up on the idea of releasing a poetry compilation. He had not expected someone to approach him about this matter instead. All right, I will head on over. You sound out of breath. Did you just get home? I was always home, haha, but I went for a run just now. Why don't I go over to your place instead? You can choose where to meet. It's up to you. It's fine. I would like to take a look at your publishing house, too. Send me your address, and I will drive over. After hanging up, he received a message with the address. John Yi took a quick shower to wash off his sweat and then drove to the location. North Chinese Youth and Children's Publishing House. The headquarters was in Beijing, but the place was a bit out of the way, with it not being in the city's center. On the way there, Zhong Yi went online on his phone to check out the publishing house. He found out that there were many youth and children's publishing houses in the country, but none of them only published reading materials for youths or children. Some even did not publish such materials, but instead dealt with traditional novels or web novels. That had nothing to do with youths or children at all. In the lobby, Zhong Yi finally found the building and walked in. Just as he was walking to the front desk reception, Zhong Yi was immediately recognized by the young lady seated there. She said to him, Teacher Zhong Yi, you came? I'll take you upstairs. Zhong Yi smiled. Thank you. You're welcome, the young lady said as she led him to the third floor. Knocking on the door, she then opened it and walked in. Editor-in-chief Zhong, teacher Zhong Yi is here. 
That person stood up to welcome him, smiling with his outstretched hand, How are you, Teacher Zhong? We are family, both of us are Zhongs. My name is Zhong Lu. I have heard of you for a long time now. From his voice, this was likely the middle-aged man who had spoken with him over the phone just now. Zhong Yi shook his hand, it's all infamy. Hearing his self-deprecating tone, Zhong Lu said, that's not true, you have helped Father Wei seek justice. Anyone who knows about it will give you the thumbs up. How could they fire you? Zhong Lu laughed, they let a treasure like you slip away. It's so laughable. This was rather true, and it was also Zhong Lu's opinion. If Zhong Yi was from his publishing firm, even if he had created so much trouble, the firm would fight to keep him since Zhong Yi's intentions were good in the first place. They had already heard of the extremely good sales of Ghost Blows Out the Light and his other fairy tales. Who wouldn't fight to keep such a cash cow? Of course, you cannot compare apples to oranges. After all, a publishing firm and a television station were very different. Profits were now the main concern for publishing firms, as political publications had decreased. For television stations, who earned money from ratings and advertising sponsorship, they were much focused on political implications, so their industries were different. There were about three to four other people in the room. Zhong Lu introduced them to Zhong Yi one by one. They were people of both sexes, all employees of the publishing firm. After the introductions, Zhong Yi sat down, about the compilation, I don't really understand or know why you would like to publish them. There will not be enough pages, right? Zhong Lu smiled. There will be enough. We will have illustrations as well. Illustrations? Zhong Yi said, would that help much? There will also be translations and sentence analysis. A poem will take up to three to four pages, one page of illustration, another one to two pages of analysis. But of course, the analysis would not be written by us. We wouldn't dare to because no one can claim to understand all of your works. This would be better left to the author. The same would go for the couplets. Two to three couplets would appear on each page and we would be able to come up with a compilation without problems, said John Lu. Zhong Yi pondered for a moment, the explanation is not a problem, but isn't the amount of content still lacking? He felt that it was just to bolster the page count. A youth at the back said, it's not little at all. Even if we take one of your poems and make a book out of it, no one would dare to say a thing, let alone having so many of your works in the book. The Song of the Stormy Petrel and Tribute to the White Poplar, with their words enlarged a little, will easily be able to take up seven to eight pages. F asterisk asterisk K. How big would the words have to be then? But John Yi himself wanted to publish a book, too. Firstly, there was his fame to consider. Secondly, it was to maintain his popularity. Thirdly, whether it be for money or reputation points, he could also do with some extra money. Finally, it came to the point of them discussing about the price. They would buy all his copyright for 400,000 yuan. This was already quite a high price. After all, a literary compilation was not a novel. It was not as popular with the masses as entertainment material like novels. Only some cultural hipsters would buy it, hence the price naturally could not compare with Ghost Blows Out the Light, and could only be about the same price as the children's fairy tales. And if no comparison was made with novels, compared to other pure literary works or compilations of other authors, the price for Zhong Yi's compilation was definitely much higher than theirs. There was no reason to wonder why. It was because every piece of Zhong Yi's works were too popular. With the negotiations settled and the contract drawn up, Zhong Lu and Zhong Yi shook hands once again, we had a good time working together. Thank you for trusting our publication house. Leave the publishing and promotional matters to us. With your reputation and fame in Beijing, the sales will definitely not be low. With a pause, he said, about the analysis of the poems. Zhong Yi said, I'll write it when I get home. I'll pass it to you tomorrow. Zhong Lu extremely liked Zhong Yi's straightforwardness and his high efficiency, as he said, all right, then I'll count on your hard work. Actually doing so in a month would do. After all, analysis work is not something trivial. Oh, and there's also something. We might need a preface or prologue, or some overall introduction to the poetry compilation. Zhong Yi blinked, preface? Zhong Lu nodded, right. 
write anything that comes to your mind. It preferably resonates with the poetry compilation's contents. If the first page began with the poetry compilation, it would feel like something is lacking. What say you? All right. Zhong Yi asked, do you have a pen? Zhong Lu's eyes lit up, are you writing it now? Good. Of course there is. The people behind him all knew that it wasn't easy for someone to witness Zhong Yi creating a work on the spot. They were very happy and excited, why don't you use a brush? If that's the case, we can directly use your words for the cover or preface. It will feel better than using computer fonts. Zhong Lu agreed, right. What a good idea. I heard that teacher Zhong's words are pretty good. Sure, Zhong Yi did not mind. A youth quickly prepared it. A minute later, he came back with an ink stick and took the initiative to grind the ink for Zhong Yi. I'll take the pictures. A woman took out a camera and took a few pictures from the side and front. She included the editor-in-chief, Zhong Lu, too. In the future, they could also use it in promotional materials. Then the woman focused the camera and waited to take a picture of teacher Zhong Yi writing. Preface? It had to match the content. His literary compilation definitely needed his own thoughts and values. Thinking of the death written of in, My Confession, and, Prisoner's Song, and then thinking of the existence in, A Generation, and, Tribute to the White Poplar. Zhong Yi lifted his brush and wrote a preface on the calligraphy paper. Let life be beautiful like summer flowers and death like autumn leaves, Zhong Yi. Chapter 183, The Heavenly Queen is going to be Zhong Yi's wife? Zhong Lu was dumbfounded, let life be beautiful like summer flowers? Death like, autumn leaves. The young editor recited it in a daze. The words are written so nicely. This poem is even better. An old editor gave his kudos. Teacher Zhong Yi is indeed talented. I believe it today, the only woman there said. Zhong Yi put down the brush and smiled at the female editor, could it be that you didn't believe it in the past? The woman's face turned red and she quickly waved her hands, no, no such thing. I never saw it with my own eyes in the past, so I did not feel as strongly. Hi, I chose my words wrongly. Tonight, Editor-in-Chief Zhong will treat you to dinner. I will punish myself with a cup of alcohol as to atone for my sins. Zhong Yi immediately said, it's fine. I'm not that particular. Ha ha, I was just joking. Zhong Lu was still looking at the words, was this really thought up on the spot by you? It's absolutely impressive. Using this poem for the preface is extremely apt. The mood written in it is indescribable. The people from the publishing house were giving their kudos. Some even applauded and were not stingy with their praises towards Zhong Yi. Zhong Yi hurriedly answered with a few modest words. This poem was just a simple sentence. In terms of word count, it was even shorter than a generation. However, the fewer the words, the more apparent his skill was. It was not easy to write it. A saying went that the philosophy at the highest level can be described with the simplest words. It was probably this principle. This poem actually had a great origin. It was a poem from his world's famous Indian poet, Tagore, in Stray Birds. The translation was by Jing Zhendua. It was a very famous poem in Zhong Yi's world. Actually, even, See Me or Not, and, This Is Also Everything, were not as famous as this poem. Be it the original version or the translated version, just a short sentence had a strong mood leap out of the paper. Why did he use this as a prologue? Why did Zhong Yi use this sentence as a prologue? Firstly, Zhong Yi wanted it to resonate with the works in the compilation. The poetry he liked and the poems he used from his world were all more open and free. Be it being indifferent, or cursing, or moving, or taking death lightly, or a life full of vibrancy, this poem that came from, Stray Birds, was perfectly apartment. It was as if it summarized all his works at once. Secondly, this poem also reflected John Yi's character and ideals. It could also be said to describe his wishes. Let life be beautiful like summer flowers and death like autumn leaves. This sentence might seem slightly artistic, but in simple words, and using the words great men used to commemorate comrade Lu Hulan, this poem could also be said to be, a great life. A glorious death. 
Actually, Zhong Yi also wanted this sentence of the greats as a prologue, but it was too blunt, nor was he that great and glorious to praise himself. Hence, his world's famous poem from Stray Birds came out. Back home. Zhong Yi began doing the comments and notes. This was indeed a heavy workload. If he had to make up something, it would not only take more than a day, even a month would not be enough. It would bound to be full of errors, too. Zhong Yi then took a look at his game reputation. Once it crept up slowly to 200,000 points, he bought two memory search capsules from the merchant shop to look through the analysis and notes of those poems back in his world. After staying up the whole night and day, he finally finished and delivered them to the publishing house. Today. It was almost night time now. Autumn was almost over and the nights fell earlier. Zhong Yi looked on as the sun set. He lay in bed without moving. His arms were sore and his neck was aching. There was no part of him that was not tired. He had spent the past two days writing up his comments. Even though all the content was already in his head and with the memory search capsules, he could retrieve all the information fully intact, it was still a lot of work. He also had to work on modifying the script and comments until late at night before everything was completed. For the whole of today, Zhong Yi lazed in bed without moving. He even skipped running, which he had been doing daily for the last few days. He needed a break. Ring, ring, ring. Zhong Lu from the publishing house called. Zhong Yi, who had been lying down all day, had some life injected into him. He reached out to answer the call, Hello, Editor Zhong. Teacher Zhong, you have worked hard. Zhong Lu was smiling widely on the other side, I have read through the comments and notes last night. Everything is good. We got the typesetting done today and the illustrations are also ready. I just got out from the printers. The first edition has already been printed. If nothing goes wrong, we will be using this edition for release. They will be released for sale in the next few days. But before that, I think you should have a look at it first. It's your compilation after all. Are you at home now? Is it convenient? Zhong Yi politely said, Why don't I look for you instead? No need. I am around the area. Shall I go over to your place? asked Zhong Lu. That's fine, too. It did not matter to Zhong Yi. He wanted to, to quickly see the finished product, too. Compared to Ghost Blows Out the Light and the Fairy Tales, this compilation might not be comparable to them in terms of sales. There was nothing to even compete with. But, John Yi's compilation had immeasurable value. But in terms of literature, in terms of its meaning, Ghost Blows Out the Light would not even stand a chance against this. What did the compilation represent? It represented fame. It represented reputation. It could be said that once the compilation was released, Zhong Yi would have made his mark in the literary world. No one could refute him as his place had already been recognized by the market and audience. Whichever poet or author they might be, they all had to be tested by the market before they could claim to be a writer. Otherwise, it would only be considered as self-praise. Literature was not only for other literary persons, but for the masses, too. Take for example Wang Shuaxin. Although he was quite a bigwig in the country's poetry circles, if he wanted to publish a compilation of his poetry, it was unlikely that any publishers would work with him because, if they did, they might not even make much profit. Even worse, the publishers might even take a big loss. It was time to get up. Zhong Yi showered before cleaning up his house. Ding dong, the bell sounded. He went to open the door, editor-in-chief Zhong, come. Even before he could complete the sentence, he was slightly shocked, it's you? There was a strange person standing at the door. Wearing a hat, aviator shades, and a face mask. If it were anyone else, they would have jumped in shock, thinking that this was some criminal. But Zhong Yi was familiar with this person. This sort of situation had already happened a few times, Sister Zhong. Why are you here? Zhong Yuanch's beautiful eyes hidden behind her sunglasses looked at him, You don't welcome me? Of course I welcome you. Zhong Yi said listlessly, Please come in. Zhong Yuanchi was dressed to the nines today. A bright red dress paired with red heels of at least 10 centimeters or more. She was even taller than Zhong Yi. Was she not afraid of the cold? Zhong Yi closed the door, where did you go to? 
Zhong Yuanqi kicked off her heels while leaning against the door. She let out a breath and said tiredly, movie premiere. Kicking off her heels? Barefooted? What sort of image was she giving? What heavenly queen? White maiden too. The premiere was today? Zhong Yi knew about it as he had paid attention to her news. Zhong Yuanqi nodded, I got a cab while everyone was still busy. Do you have water? Let me see. Zhong Yi looked a little, then threw an unopened bottle of water to her, it's the last bottle. Leave some for me. I'm thirsty, too. He was not so polite anymore since he was quite familiar with the Heavenly Queen already. Oh, give me a call first in future if you are coming. At least let me get prepared. Zhong Yuanqi looked at him, my phone's with my manager. Where can I put it in this dress of mine? Oh, you need to go downstairs. I have not paid for the cab yet. Ah? I did not bring my purse. You're really great. Zhong Yi could only quickly make his way downstairs. The cab driver had been waiting for the longest time. Seeing Zhong Yi coming to pay up, he said angrily, you are keeping me from doing my job. Dare to take a cab when she didn't even bring money. Is that your girlfriend? How could she? At this moment, the cab driver was surprised, Ayo, aren't you teacher Zhong Yi? Zhong Yi gave a wry smile, that's me. The cab driver stuffed the money back to him, then I don't want it. Zhong Yi a little stunned said, how is that? Take it, take it. The cab driver looked at him, who doesn't know about you going broke to save a fan's life? And after that, seeking justice for Father Wei Yi and losing your job. If I were to take your money, I would be cursed to death by my other cab colleagues. Don't want, don't want. I'm leaving. Don't. Hey. Driver. Zhong Yi chased after him. The cab driver had sped away after making a turn. Zhong Yi felt a little warm inside and shouted out to the cab, then thank you. The car windows rolled down and the driver put out his hands to give Zhong Yi a thumbs up. Then the cab disappeared into the distance. Back upstairs. The windows were open. Zhong Yuanqi probably heard everything. Zhong Yuanqi was sitting cross-legged on the chair, reading a book. She looked up and said, You have some reputation, don't you? Zhong Yi said, Don't kid me. If you removed your face mask, you would be free to walk all over the country. How could my little reputation compare to you? Zhong Yuanqi muttered, I will pay you back next time. Forget it. I did not expect you to anyway. Just don't steal my song next time. Just as they were chatting, the doorbell rang. Holy sure asterisk T. This was going to be bad. Zhong Yi acknowledged the knocking, but suddenly realized something. He looked over to Zhong Yuanqi, um, so someone is coming over from the publishing house. You. Zhong Yuanqi frowned, why didn't you say so earlier? You did not inform me earlier either. Zhong Yi looked left and right to find a place. Zhong Yuanqi reached for her sunglasses and face mask. Zhong Yi did not know whether to laugh or to cry, it's already dark. Who wears this at home at this time? It'll look odd. An open apartment like this could not possibly hide anyone. Zhong Yuanqi simply slid into the chair with her back facing the door. She continued to read like nothing was wrong, this will do. The bell sounded again. Zhong Yi could not delay any more. He was worried that if anyone saw the Heavenly Queen at his home, it would be a mess. Hesitating for a moment, he still opened the door, but stood at the entrance. It looked like he did not intend to ask them in, Editor Zhong, yo. Editor Chen and Editor Sun are here, too? Three people had came over, two men and a woman. Zhong Lu smiled. We were just passing by after work. We came together in a car. The female editor standing behind had sharp eyes. She spotted the woman's figure in the apartment, A. Eh? That is. Zhong Yi paused for a moment. It's done for. This time it's bad. The Heavenly Queen had been recognized. The female editor the laughed and said, Is that teacher Zhong Yi's wife? Just from her back, I can tell that she is beautiful. Teacher Zhong is really blessed. Chapter 184 The Misunderstanding of the Publishing House's Employees. My wife. I really do wish so. 
but I can't afford to have such a wife. John Yi gave a perfunctory smile to the visitors standing outside, oh no, I'm not married yet. That's a friend of mine. She came to visit and to borrow some books. The heavenly queen continued sitting with her back facing them. She did not make a sound. The female editor felt that it was a little strange. Even if they were just friends, how could she not stand up to welcome them when their visitors were about to enter the house? She did not even turn her head? What kind of situation was this? Why was it so bizarre? The female editor courteously greeted the woman whose face could not be seen, hello, elder sister. She could see that she was older just by the way she dressed up and her hairstyle. And John Yi's reputation was not small either, so being his friend, calling her elder sister would not be wrong. The woman who was reading the books acknowledged softly and then continued doing her thing. The female editor awkwardly scratched her hair and said to Zhang Yi, Ah, uh, did we, come at the wrong time? Zhang Yi could only make up something saying, No, she, she just had an argument with me. Her mood's not that good. Don't mind her. I'm sorry about it. Argument? Weren't you just friends? What argument? The female editor thought to herself that this must definitely be your girlfriend. Zhong Lu and the other editor also thought it was strange. They blinked and looked at Zhong Yi, Teacher Zhong, we brought the books over. Where do you want to put it? A thick pile of books in a box. Zhong Yi was surprised, so many books. There must be twenty in there? Zhong Lu laughed, thirty books, and they are all first prints. There's no bulk print yet. The editor holding the box looked inside the apartment, where do you want to place these? Look through them first. If they're okay, then we will do the bulk printing. Zhong Yi immediately blocked the door, there's no need. I trust you all. There won't be any problems. It's better to look at it first. If by any chance there's a wrong word, it would affect the quality and sales. Zhong Lu suggested. The male editor had already entered the apartment, I will put it here on the floor then. Who, it's rather heavy. Seeing the situation, Zhong Yi turned back to check on Zhong Yuanch's position frequently, this. But Zhong Lu and the female editor also followed in and even closed the door. Zhong Yi could not even make them leave now. There was no reason to. This was bad. The cat's going to be out of the bag soon. Let's. Where should we sit and discuss? Zhong Lu asked. Zhong Yi wiped his sweat on the bed. Feel free to take a seat. The heavenly queen, who was reading, was facing the corner. If they sat on the bed, they would not be able to see her face. At most, they would be able to see her side partially. The female editor squatted down to open the box and took out a few books. She gave one to Zhong Yi first, take a look, and then turned around and politely said to the woman with an extremely beautiful back view, Sis, for you. Before she could finish saying, the beautiful woman said coldly, no need. The female editor choked and coughed, okay then. The two of them really argued? From the looks of it, it was a very big argument. She didn't give any face at all? Zhong Yi suddenly felt a loss of face, too, hey you, she was passing you a book. He knew that was the heavenly queen's attitude, but even so, even if you did not want to turn around, you can't say that. Where would this bro put his face now? So Zhong Yi took the book from the female editor's hands and walked over. He put it into Zhong Yu Enchi's hands, help me take a look, too, to see whether there are any typos. The heavenly queen did not reply. Zhong Yi tried to smooth things over, take a seat. I will get some tea for you. There's no need, teacher Zhong. We won't be staying long. Take a look at the compilation first. If it's okay, then it's set. We will not bother you two from resting. The male editor also smiled ambiguously. Our rest? Rest, my ass. Zhong Yi could not argue. He flipped open, Zhong Yi's compilation. The cover was simple. It looked elegant in a conventional way. Upon opening it, Zhong Yi's age and resume was written on the first page on the left. The first page on the right was the preface, Let life be beautiful like summer flowers and death like autumn leaves. Flipping to the next pages. A page of poetry, a page of illustration, followed by a page or two of notes. 
After reading it all, Zhong Yi nodded in satisfaction, okay, I'm done reading it. It's all good. Usually when a book was published, the author would be the one begging the publishing house to quickly release the book. But for a person of Zhong Yi's level, it had become the publishing house who had to beg him. Otherwise, for normal authors, which chief editor of a publishing house would bring his team to send the first print to the doorstep? There was no need to mention how widespread Zhong Yi's poems were on the internet. Each one of them was a miracle. Any one of his works would easily gain at least a million clicks. On Weibo, it would have thousands of forwards and a few thousand comments. In addition, Zhong Yi's Ghost Blows Out the Light and his fairy tales had all accumulated several millions of yuan in sales, so he was already a well-established author in this field. He had even been a radio host and television host before, so he already had a level of fame in Beijing. Although his number of fans was not extremely high, the number of hardcore fans was enough. If each bought a book, they would not have to incur any losses. So on the matter of publication, the publication house was very polite to Zhong Yi. Zhong Lu stood up and smiled while shaking Zhong Yi's hands, okay then. The first edition is settled. I will rush the printing press tomorrow. Zhong Yi said, let's work together happily. To good cooperation. Zhong Lu said. The female editor said, Teacher Zhong, then we will be leaving now. Let me see you out, Zhong Yi took a coat to wear. There's no need. Said the male editor, you must be tired from rushing out the notes these few days. You must not have slept much. Editor Zhong's car is just downstairs. There's no need to come out. The female editor giggled, right, you should keep sister-in-law company. Sister-in-law? What sister-in-law? Zhong Yi nearly fainted and said, she's really my friend, just ordinary friends. You've misunderstood. The female editor just smiled. The three of them then opened the door and left. Zhong Yi walked them to the corridor as a gesture. At this moment, Zhong Lu also laughed. He patted Zhong Yi on the shoulder, all right, go in and coax your partner. Your partner must really have a temper, just like my wife. My wife is the same, she won't care at all when she's angry. Doesn't even leave any face for me. Being experienced in this, let me give you a few pointers. You know women, they all need to be coaxed. Give in when you need to give in. When she is over it, you can go back to being the man. John Yi. He wanted to explain, but they had already taken the lift down. Turning around, he saw that Zhong Yuanqi was still in the same position, reading the book and not looking behind. Zhong Yi looked at her for a while, and then puckered his mouth. HNG, this Zhong Yuanqi has too many shortcomings. First, she puts on a false front. Second, her attitude was really poor. Third, her survival skills were low. Fourth, she doesn't take into consideration how others feel. And so on and so forth. It numbered so much that it was uncountable. As for her strong points, she had one, she was pretty. And then, is there any need to go on? No, there's nothing more to say. Then. All the shortcomings from before no longer mattered. Chapter 185 at home. The two of them said nothing. Zhong Yi bent down and picked the box of books up. He placed the books by the window and after throwing away the empty box, he looked at the floor. He then picked up the red stilettos that the heavenly queen had kicked away and walked a few steps to place them by the door. He then threw a pair of slippers towards her. Slippers. Zhong Yi reminded her. Oh. Zhong Yu and she placed her feet down and wore them. Zhong Yi looked at her, have you eaten? Yes, Zhong Yu and she answered half-heartedly. Then carry on reading. I will make some food, said Zhong Yi. The heavenly queen did not turn her head, she continued to read the book. It was Zhong Yi's compilation book. Zhong Yi was hungry. Zhong Lu and company made him nervous. The heavenly queen had nearly been discovered, resulting in Zhong Yi's heart being on tenterhooks. He turned on the stove and prepared a bowl of guamian noodles, eggs and some green onions. He was sick of eating instant noodles. So he wanted to eat guamian noodles to have a change of taste. He slurped it up. As he was eating, the heavenly queen suddenly closed the book, give me the book. Ah. 
Zhong Yi said with the noodles forming a beard on his chin, take it, I have plenty anyway. Zhong Yuanqi glanced at him, let life be beautiful like summer flowers and death like autumn leaves. Did you write that? Who else could it be? Zhong Yi laughed, why? It's not bad, right? Zhong Yuanqi said nonchalantly, one day when I publish a book, help me write a preface. That's settled. What do you mean, settled? That won't do. Zhong Yi tutted, my poems aren't freely given. If you really like my poems, I can give you the book and give you my autograph. Zhong Yuanqi said without giving any face, the autograph is unnecessary. Zhong Yi said angrily, you won't have any friends in the future by being like that. After finishing the noodles and washing the dishes, Zhong Yi looked at his watch. It was getting late. Are you leaving today? Zhong Yi asked. Yes. Zhong Yuanqi also raised her wrist to check the time. She probably also found out that it was late. Looking sideways, her eyes landed on Zhong Yi's wallet. Without any propriety, she picked up the wallet on the table and opened it. She then took 500 yuan out of it. Zhong Yi said in alarm, What are you doing? I didn't bring money. Lend me some, Zhong Yuanqi said coldly. Zhong Yi said helplessly, Forget it. I'll send you back. Zhong Yuanqi acknowledged, That would do. Man, can you be more polite? Zhong Yi was at a loss whether to laugh or to cry, Where is your house? As long as it's not too far. It's nearly nine. If it's the suburbs, I won't be able to come back after going there. Zhong Yuanqi said coldly, There's a Jinyuan hotel at Ma Jiobao. You can send me there. Why are you going to a hotel? Zhong Yi asked curiously. Peace and quiet for two days. I'm evading a job, Zhong Yuanqi said. Zhong Yi only realized that the Heavenly Queen came to his house every time to relax. She was evading the bustle. At his place, she did not need to care about her status as the Heavenly Queen. She could do or say anything she wanted. Today, the Heavenly Queen clearly had such intentions. But since it was already late, she most likely did not want to stay in Zhong Yi's house. It was unbecoming for a male and female to be alone together. The first time was only because she was drunk and had no clothes to wear. Hi, forget it. He would go all the way to help her. Whenever the Heavenly Queen was stressed with work, she would first think of Zhong Yi and come to him. Although Zhong Yi constantly complained, he was quite flattered deep down. The Heavenly Queen did not stand on ceremony with her nonchalant attitude. From a different angle, if the Heavenly Queen really disliked Zhong Yi as much as she said she did, why would she come to Zhong Yi's house every time she wanted to relax? Why would she not find other friends? Hence, Zhong Yi believed that although he was not important in the Heavenly Queen's heart, he was at least special. Besides, the Heavenly Queen trusted him greatly. Thinking of this, Zhong Yi wore a tender smile. Trusting me would be right. You have the foresight to know that this bro would not spout nonsense about you. The Heavenly Queen has a bad temper, so she had a way of evaluating people. The Heavenly Queen already wore her sunglasses and face mask. Zhong Yi was also afraid that he would be recognized. He was after all somewhat famous in Beijing. Hence, he also wore a pair of sunglasses and he avoided arousing suspicion by not walking together with the Heavenly Queen. He first went down to drive the car over. After he stopped the car at a secluded spot, Zhong Yuanqi also appeared downstairs a short while later. Over here. Zhong Yi rolled down his car windows and said softly. Zhong Yuanqi looked at his BMW X5. She did not sit in the passenger seat, she sat at the back. This made it difficult for people to see her. Your car. Zhong Yi tapped the steering wheel, that's right. Not bad, right. You must think that this is a normal X5, right? Ha, huh, then you would be wrong. This car of mine is. Zhong Yuanqi lowered her head and carried on reading Zhong Yi's compilation. Zhong Yi wanted to brag but he ended up choking on his words. He could only depressingly drive off. He did not brag again. This heavenly queen did not like chatting. It was not far away. In front of them, the signboard of Jinyuan Hotel appeared. Zhong Yi stopped by the road, we are here. It looks like a five-star hotel? 
or is it four star? The 500 you took from me won't be enough for you to stay there for two days, right? Zhang Yuanqi did not even lift her head while reading the book, help me get a room. I don't have a purse, nor do I have any identification. Even if I had it, I can't use it. Indeed, that was the case. If the Heavenly Queen's identification card was used at the hotel, a storm would brew. She could wear sunglasses, but the picture on her identification card couldn't. She was bound to be recognized. Typically, a celebrity at the level of the Heavenly Queen, even when they were out on business trips, would have their managers or assistants book a room for them using their own identification. If the fans knew, they would definitely be surrounded, and that would be trouble. All right. John Yi smacked his lips. He alighted and walked into the hotel lobby, Hi, I want to get a room. Do you have a reservation? The clerk at the front desk asked. No, John Yi shook his head. The clerk said, Then I'm very sorry. All our rooms are full. John Yi was surprised, They are all full? A suite would do as well. Not a single room is available. The clerk explained, It's already nine, so unless someone checks out now, it is very unlikely. John Yi could only exit the hotel and return to the car. There aren't any rooms left. John Yuanchi frowned, Keep looking. Other hotels will do. Man, I've already become your assistant. Zhong Yi was feeling stifled as he drove around. After alighting the car and asking a relatively presentable hotel, there were still no rooms. Zhong Yi asked the clerk at the front desk if there were any places he could get nearby. The clerk was pretty good and he secretly pointed across the road. When Zhong Yi looked over, it was a signboard of a motel. Who cares? Staying anywhere was the same. Zhong Yi did not tell Zhong Yuanqi. After driving across the road, he found that the motel was located in a small residential area. It was called Chengfeng Motel. It was very old and it looked very crappy from the exterior. Entering the motel. Is there a room available? Zhong Yi asked. The clerk at the front desk checked the computer, let me see. Oh, there's one. A room with a normal king-sized bed. Zhong Yi nodded, I'll take it. Please give it to me. He then took his identification card out and proceeded with the formalities. The clerk probably did not know Zhong Yi. He had no reaction after seeing the identification card. The room was ready for him. Zhong Yi did not go up, he first returned to the car and drove towards the small residential area. He stopped at a corner and then indicated to Zhong Yuanqi, Will this do? I've already gotten a room. Zhong Yuanqi said indifferently, What do you think? Zhong Yi coughed, This place is actually not bad. It's not eye catching, so there's no worry that others will recognize you. Who would think that the Heavenly Queen would stay here? Right? It is a deception. Don't you want two days of peace and quiet, so no one will disturb you? I think that this place is perfectly suitable. It's also cheap. Yes, the key reason was because it was cheap. The Heavenly Queen did not say a word. He couldn't tell if she was satisfied or not. Zhong Yi ended up saying, let's go. If it won't do, I'll reserve a better hotel for you and change it. There are definitely no rooms available today. It's so late. Zhong Yu and she kept the book, go. I'll be going in first. You join me in five minutes. Room 318. Since you don't have any identification, the front desk might check if we are together. Saying that, Zhong Yi first entered the motel. The room was not big and it was at most 18 square meters. Zhong Yi looked down from the window and he saw the Heavenly Queen walk towards the motel. This scene made Zhong Yi's blood rush. It felt like he was engaging in an extramarital affair. Suddenly, Zhong Yi looked in the distance not far behind Zhong Yu Enchi. Oh. Who are these two people? Why were they pointing at Zhong Yu Enchi? They were a couple and they were probably here to get a room. However, they were currently looking at Zhong Yu Enchi and were speaking in low voices. A while later. Knock, knock. Zhong Yi quickly and quietly opened the door. Once the Heavenly Queen entered, he closed the door, afraid that people could see through the door's peephole. The room is a bit small, so make do with it. 
Zhong Yuanqi looked around. It was most likely that she had never lived in such a small motel before. However, she did not say a word and she drew the curtains. Zhong Yi did not have much thoughts back at home, but at a motel, Zhong Yi could not help but fantasize. He felt somewhat embarrassed, then I'll be leaving first. Tomorrow, I'll reserve a room at the Jingyuan Hotel. It will probably be at noon. I'll come to pick you up in the afternoon. Right, you don't have a cell phone. I'll remember the extension to your room, so I can contact you. Zhong Yi then remembered the number and wore his sunglasses and prepared to head downstairs. When had the Heavenly Queen not lived in a five-star hotel before? Yet he had gotten her a motel room. And it was the cheapest place at 108 a day. Thinking of that, Zhong Yi was slightly amused. As he was on the stairs leading to the lobby, he heard a few people conversing. Sorry, we don't have any more rooms. No, I'm a reporter. Is Zhong Yuanqi staying here? Ah. Which Zhong Yuanqi? The Heavenly Queen. Yes, someone said he saw her here. Well, I didn't see her. Why would the Heavenly Queen live in our motel? Haha, ha, you are so humorous. Please leave. Hey, no pictures. Who let you take pictures? Take the pictures. This is big news. Hearing this, he did not dare to take another step out. Oh no. The reporters are here. Chapter 186, Heavenly Queen Jong meets Mystery Man late into the night. Room 318. Zhong Yi quickly darted back. Knock, knock, knock. He knocked on the door for a long time. The door opened and a warm rush of hot air surged out. Clearly, Zhong Yuanqi had turned on the heater in the room. She was wearing very little clothing. What's the matter? The Heavenly Queen asked nonchalantly. Let me in first. Zhong Yi squeezed into the room and closed the door. There's a problem. Zhong Yuanqi was very calm because she was battle hardened, speak slowly. What happened? Zhong Yi pointed downstairs and said, There are some reporters here. They're blocking the motel entrance and asking if you are staying here. I did not dare show myself, but I think I heard two of them, they even kept on taking pictures. A, I'm puzzled, we just arrived, how did they even know? Ayo, I remember now. When you were coming in, wasn't there a couple who was walking behind you? I saw them pointing at you, but I didn't think much of it. I thought they were just talking about your rather gorgeous dress. This is not good. Upon hearing that, Zhong Yuanqi switched off the lights and went to the window. She opened it a little to look downstairs. One car. Two cars. There were more and more people coming. These people were clearly reporters. It was too obvious. Some of them were even carrying cameras. Some of them were just ordinary people, maybe they were Heavenly Queen Zhong's fans. Many people had gathered around the motel by now and some people from the district also came over in their pajamas. Sister Zhong came here? I heard that too. It's so exciting. Where is she? Where? Why don't I see her? So many reporters? Holy sha asterisk T, is this going crazy? What's crazy about it? This is Heavenly Queen Zhong. Every move of hers attracts the attention of others. If you want to talk about crazy, I'm the one going crazy. Does Sister Zhong have a boyfriend? Why would she come to a hotel? Your sister, which son of a bitch managed to woo Sister Zhong? Don't tell me. If you do, I'll fight him to the death. My Sister Zhong. My goddess. I'm not leaving today, I want to see who it is. There's only one entrance and exit for this motel. As long as we block it, we will know anyone who walks in or out. One after another, people arrived. Soon, about a hundred people had gathered in the front yard of the motel. The numbers were continuing to increase with many people joining out of curiosity. Where did the news spread from? In the room. John Yuanqi closed the curtains. Check the internet. John Yi immediately checked his phone's browser. Without even needing to search thoroughly, he had found the news article. Clicking the link, a page appeared showing a picture of a woman's back view. Red top, 
black skirt, red stiletto heels. Above her head was the motel signboard. Although it was just the back view and the picture was fuzzy, it was placed beside another clearer picture. This was the picture of Zhong Yuanqi at the premiere of White Maiden 2. She was dressed identically in both pictures and they were even captured on the same day. The headlines was even more exciting. Heavenly Queen Zhong's secret meeting with mysterious man. Zhong Yuanqi and mystery man checks into motel. Has Heavenly Queen's rumored boyfriend appeared? Who could it be? The headlines were getting more and more shocking, but the content was largely the same, as everyone knows. Since Heavenly Queen Zhong started out as a child star, she has never been in a relationship nor had there ever been any news of any relationships. But today, a couple posted a picture on Weibo. The person in the picture is suspected to be Zhong Yuanqi. After comparing the picture with our reporter's photos, it is 90% confirmed that the person who went into the motel was Zhong Yuanqi. Earlier in the day, she had attended the premiere for White Maiden 2. Their figure and clothes are exactly the same. The premiere of White Maiden 2 ended a few hours earlier and Heavenly Queen Zhong disappeared without even changing. She mysteriously appeared later at a motel in Nancheng wearing the same outfit. The outfit does not have pockets so that would mean she does not have any money or identification on her. The couple who spotted her first said that the Heavenly Queen had taken the elevator up directly, and she did not ask for a room at the reception counter. From this, we can deduce that Heavenly Queen Zhong is not staying there alone. Someone was waiting for her. Manager? Assistant? Or a female friend of the Heavenly Queen? That's not likely, why would a meeting with a female friend not be at home? Or in a big hotel? But instead secretly going to a small district's insignificant motel? There could only be one answer, the other party is a man. To keep the secret, they had to settle for such a place. Who would have thought, the country's famous S-list Heavenly Queen would settle for a motel? The most dangerous place has become the safest place. But unexpectedly, she was spotted by a pair of lovers who took her picture. After reading this, Zhong Yi nearly fainted. Is this group of reporters working as detectives? Aren't they too good at analytical work? This and that could be put together. Zhong Yuanqi had a deadpan look after reading the article. Zhong Yi knew that this matter had blown up, why don't I leave quickly? How can you leave? Zhong Yuanqi asked, there's only one doorway here. The motel staff might not recognize you, but do you think the reporters are stupid? You can just get by them with a pair of sunglasses? Zhong Yi also knew this was true. He was no longer an unknown person who could walk along the streets without being recognized. The reporters would definitely recognize him. If he went out now, his photos would be taken for sure. If he and Zhong Yuanqi had no dealings previously, they could let it slide. But Zhong Yi had written a song for the Heavenly Queen, so anyone would know that the two of them had met through work before. Two people who knew each other, two public figures, on the same day and checking into a motel at the same time. Even a fool would know that there was something to it, what more, those ultra-sensitive reporters. Given the cause and effect of this matter, even Zhong Yi would not believe that he had nothing to do with Heavenly Queen Zhong. The internet was also putting two and two together, everyone was in disbelief. Heavens! My sister Zhong. No. Who dares to do this to my goddess? I'm furious. They are even doing this at a motel? Oh, my heart. It's bleeding. Bastard. Let go of our goddess. You guys can't say that, Sister Zhong is a normal woman as well. She needs to have relationships, get married and have children too. You can't take away Sister Zhong's basic rights and freedom to love. I support Sister Zhong's freedom to love. A. She's been working too hard and getting too tired, every day is work, work and work, which of you has ever felt for her? That might be true, but, my heart still feels terrible. I can't accept it too. Who the hell could it be? That bastard. How could he be so lucky to catch Sister Jong's eyes? No, I must go and take a look. Ma Jiobao is not far from where I am. I'm also from Beijing. Let's go together. We need to catch that man and kill him. Of course, most of what they said were just in a joking manner. 
Anyhow, almost all of the netizens had come to join in the fun and discussions. Some were supportive, saying that they were overreacting. Some objected, saying that they will skin the mysterious man alive to ease their hatred. This was getting big. Zhong Yi was dazed reading all of it. This bro had often gotten into trouble before and the internet would often break out in discussions about him. But a scandal with Zhong Yuanqi was on a different level. In the past, the discussions were kept within Beijing. As Zhong Yuanqi was popular throughout the country, this was what you would really call a discussion. Within only half an hour, it had become the headline on Weibo. On Tiebar, discussion forums and other major portals, this scandal was all over the place. Zhong Yi smiled bitterly and poked fun at himself, man, credits to you, I have now made the headlines. Zhong Yuanqi did not pay attention to him. What made Zhong Yi not know whether to laugh or cry the most was that his own fans on Tiebar were also scolding him. Bastard. Heavenly Queen Zhong is my most loved. It's over, the flowers must be planted on cow dung. At Zhong Yi, is teacher Zhong Yi around? Come over and criticize this shameless act. Heavenly Queen Zhong belongs to everyone. Not to that bastard. There were also many fans of Zhong Yuanqi within Zhong Yi's fans. Zhong Yi thought, criticize your sister, shameless act your sister. Why did you at me for? His fans obviously did not know. The mysterious man with Heavenly Queen Zhong now, the one who was creating the scandal, was in fact, their teacher Zhong Yi. A lot of netizens did not believe the news either. Why would the Heavenly Queen go to a motel? It's impossible, it might just be a coincidence that they were wearing the same outfit. Right, I don't believe it either. The Heavenly Queen would not get into a relationship now. Even if she did, she would tell her fans. The Heavenly Queen never hides anything from us fans. Did they get it wrong? It might just be a gimmick. White Maiden Two Foot has just started screening and the box office results aren't out yet. Did someone release this news to bring up the box office sales? That is common behavior. Following that, John Yuench's management also released a statement. They were forced to do so, they had to immediately start their crisis PR. The company's official Weibo and Zhong Yuanqi's management Weibo announced at the same time, on the current rumors, we would like to express our anger. The person in the photo is not Zhong Yuanqi. Please do not spread any more rumors. Sister Zhong is currently at home with a few of her friends celebrating the movie's premiere. How could Sister Zhong appear at some motel? In the next moment, Zhong Yuanqi's Weibo also posted something. A selfie of Zhong Yuanqi wearing pajamas and standing on the balcony of her villa was posted, just finished doing my face mask. Friends, why are so many people at Ing Me? What happened? Following that, another person, who was considered an A-list celebrity, also posted something. It was Ning Lan, a singer that was considered quite close to Zhong Yuanqi, I'm at Sister Zhong's house, we just finished doing our face masks and we are getting ready for bed. Ha ha, when did we both teleport to a motel? Zhong Yi. Zhong Yuanqi sat on the bed calmly. Zhong Yi was utterly impressed, your company and your friends, are really. Your sister. That was F asterisk asterisk king lying without even needing to coordinate. The heavenly queen was obviously by his side. And you all of you could say that she was at home without missing a beat. Even a selfie was posted? And even having another A-list celebrity say that they were together doing face masks. Zhong Yi finally understood. He also made a note to himself that he would no longer believe the words of these celebrities. They were full of nonsense. But many netizens believed it. Sure enough. I told you all that it was a rumor. Ha ha, the heavenly queen does not have a partner. But there were also the smarter ones amongst these netizens who did not believe it. Selfie? Who knows who posted that and when it was taken? Why is the moon in the background so round? Friends from Beijing, can you go verify if the moon tonight is really so round? It's not even the 15th or 16th asterisk yet. This is why the selfie is doubtful. Good point. What you said is pretty true. It's over, my heart is broken. My goddess Zhong has been taken. For this picture, everyone started another round of heated discussions. The matter had once again been blown up even further. 
Chapter 187, Curtains. At the motel. The front desk was clogged with people. The reporters had their cannons, cameras zooms, ready, with the cameras all set up at the entrance. Please leave. Don't stand around here, the woman at the front desk said unhappily. A television station reporter said, can you let us see the guest list? The front desk staff stared at him, how is that possible, the guest names are all private. Another reporter asked, then, did you see a woman go upstairs just now? Which room does she stay in? The front desk staff shook her head, I don't know, no comments. Are you reporters or policemen? Why are you asking so much? Leave quickly, all of you are affecting our work, she was utterly annoyed. Zhong Yuanqi? Of course she knew who that was. Would such a famous heavenly queen come to such a dilapidated and far-off motel that had such poor facilities? Wasn't this an exaggeration? Wouldn't she know what a crappy place this was? Only students who had no means would come to this place. Even those white-collared workers wouldn't want to come here, the conditions were too bad. And you think a heavenly queen would come? Why won't the heavenly queen sleep at a train station instead? At this moment, a bunch of people squeezed in from the outside. Manager. You are finally here, the front desk staff nearly cried. The manager was a middle-aged man, he asked with a straight face, what happened? What do you all want? He had found out about the situation over the phone earlier, don't disturb us from our work. Or we will call the police. After rambling for a long time, the reporters forcefully agreed to leave the motel. But they stayed around the area watching the motel's entrance along with over a hundred Zhong Yuanqi fan. When they left, the female front desk staff complained, this bunch of people, really? The manager also asked puzzledly, did the heavenly queen really come to our place? The front desk staff shook her head, how could that be? Anyway I didn't see her. I don't even know who started the rumor. The manager looked outside and pondered, let them wait. At least they are giving our motel some publicity, as long as they don't make trouble. The front desk staff bitterly said, but some of those reporters and fans have already gone upstairs. A dozen or so of them, I couldn't stop them myself. Third floor. Room 318 Zhong Yi was sweating profusely as he saw wave after wave of trouble on the internet. Zhong Yuanqi grabbed his phone and logged onto an account. There was a message. It was her manager, Fang Weihong, Sister Zhong. My dear sister. Can you not cause trouble? Can you not do the disappearing act again? Did you see what's happening online? There's news of your scandal everywhere. Oh my grandaunt. Can you please spare us? Come back quickly. We are already in a big mess. Zhong Yuanqi replied with a smiley face emoticon. Fang Weihong immediately replied, you finally appeared. My god, how long do you intend to keep this going? Why did you even go to a motel? Who are you with? Zhong Yuanqi sent another smiley face. Fang Weihong accepted that she could do nothing, all right, I won't ask about your private matters and I don't want to know who you are with. Just tell me, when will you be back? We have already released a statement and also posted your selfie on Weibo to clarify. And your friend also helped you to lie, but how long can the lie go on for? You have to show yourself quickly for the matter to calm over. Zhong Yuanqi typed, I can't leave at the moment. Fang Weihong, you have been surrounded? Then think of a way fast, we can't do much over here. Otherwise, if we go over, the scandal would become true. Forget it, don't think about leaving for now, those reporters are all too bright, you can't lie to them. Just wait a little and find a chance to leave. Zhong Yuanqi, I'm sorry, haha, I've given you trouble again. Fang Weihong, Sai, this is part of our job, even if it's trouble, we still have to do it. Actually, we are already considered lucky. If it were other celebrities, we would be dealing with scandals like this at least once every month. You are already very professional about your work, only having this happen once in over 20 years. But as your friend, let me remind you Sister Zhong, rumors are easy to handle. They are just groundless accusations. It will cool down after some time. Zhong Yuanqi did not reply. She logged off the account and returned the phone to Zhong Yi. Zhong Yi coughed, ahem. Sister Zhong, why don't I go out and take a look? 
we will slip away if there's a chance, and then. Shush. Don't speak. Zhong Yuanqi looked at the door. Zhong Yi quickly shut his mouth as he heard some footsteps outside. This is such a rundown place. Would the Heavenly Queen stay here? I don't know either, but there's a chance that it could be true. Yes, that would be some big news. Go, go, keep looking. I wonder which room it is. So many rooms here, we can't possibly knock on every door to look for them right. Before we can even find them, the police would have us arrested. Then let's wait a little, I don't believe that they won't come out. Redacted part of chapter from here on their footsteps and the chatter slowly disappeared. Zhong Yi said nervously, the entrance has been blocked, we won't be able to go out. Zhong Yuanqi opened a gap in the curtains and looked outside. There had only been a few dozen people outside earlier, but now, the motel entrance and the area around it had around 200 to 300 people. Did you park in a safe place? Zhong Yuanqi asked. Zhong Yi understood what she meant and answered, it's safe, it's a car park and there are so many other cars. It should not attract suspicions. Zhong Yuanqi nodded and lowered her head as she took off her heels. Zhong Yi asked, what are you doing? Shower. Zhong Yuanqi said blandly. Zhong Yi stupidly asked, and then? Sleep. Zhong Yuanqi said calmly. Zhong Yi touched his face, what about me? Should I find a chance to get out? Zhong Yuanqi went into the bathroom without looking back, there are reporters and my fans outside, are you able to get out? Ah. Zhong Yi was stunned. Then I will stay here too? She did not answer him, but Zhong Yi thought to himself, this wasn't the first time that they stayed in the same room anyway. But looking at the room's facilities, it couldn't be more dilapidated. There was just a large bed and a table attached to the wall, the table was especially narrow too. Besides the bed, there was also a cabinet, but other than that, there was nothing else, not even a chair. How was he to sleep? Sitting on the bedside cabinet to sleep? Bedside cabinet? So be it. It was all his fault in handling the matter poorly. John Yi understood that if he had not chosen the motel, all of this would not have happened. He could have driven further to look for a five-star hotel. Even if John Yuanqi was recognized, it wouldn't be a problem. Such celebrities often spend a huge chunk of their time in hotels anyway. But a single room at a motel that cost less than 200 was too attention-seeking. This was obviously not for work, it looked like something that was meant to be secretive. And with the highly imaginative minds of the masses, they would definitely link this to something else. This led to the current situation they were in. So in the end, Zhong Yi had some responsibility in this whole matter. He did not take all of that into consideration before he booked the room. But from a different perspective, Zhong Yuanqi did not bring any money or identification and she even came to look for him this late at night. Many of the big hotels wouldn't have any rooms available, so a large part of the responsibility was hers too. Splish. Splash. As he was thinking, the sounds came from the bathroom. Zhong Yi, who was sitting on the bed, raised his head up and saw Zhong Yuanqi in the bathroom. There was no helping it, this was a motel room and the bathroom was separated by a glass door, there was nothing else blocking it. Little Zhong. Yeah, what's the matter? Come here. Zhong Yi went into the bathroom. The heavenly queen was fumbling with the curtain in her hands, how do I pull it down? Zhong Yi went over to take a look, it was a drawstring type of curtain to block off the view from the bathroom and the room. But no matter how much he tried to get it to work, it didn't work. In the end, even the ring broke. He was full of sweat by now, so he stepped on a chair and tinkered with it for a long time before saying, ah, uh, this curtain is spoiled, you can't pull it down anymore. It was a small motel, it was normal for the facilities to be lousy. Zhong Yuanqi looked at him, then tell me, how can I shower? Zhong Yi coughed, why don't you not shower? I've been busy the entire day. If I don't shower, I can't sleep, said Zhong Yu Enqi. Zhong Yi did not dare to call the front desk staff. If they came up, everything would be exposed. There wouldn't be any rooms available to change anyway, the motel was fully booked. Zhong Yi looked around hoping for something when he spotted a long towel. He took it and stood on the chair and hung the towel. He squeezed it in and he managed to put up the towel in place of the damaged curtain. 
Zhong Yuanqi said indifferently, that doesn't block well. I know, but that's all I can do. Zhong Yi blinked, don't worry, I will face my back towards you. I won't look, all right? Zhong Yuanqi kept silent for a while, you can go outside. Zhong Yi went out of the bathroom and closed the door. He went back to the bed not knowing if the heavenly queen would shower or not. He turned his head to take a look. The cursory glance did not matter, but Zhong Yi's nose turned warm as blood rushed to it. That towel was obviously a little short and narrow. Hanging there, it covered only about half of the glass. Both ends of the glass could be seen through, the bottom of the glass also could be seen through for the length of an arm. He could clearly see Zhong Yuanqi's legs in stockings. Her lower body could not be seen, but from that angle, he could see that she was bending her body a little. Bada, the skirt came off. A pair of hands was also exposed on the other side of the unblocked piece of glass. Following that, he could see her hands moving downwards to her legs as she took off her stockings. Seeing her fair legs, Zhong Yi was now in a daze. For the moment, he had forgotten about his promise. Words like I won't look, that was all bullsh asterisk t. Her skirt was hung up. The stockings were also sorted by a pair of hands and placed on a hanger. The skirt could not be seen anymore, but the stockings could be seen around the unblocked parts of the glass. They were on a hanger and they looked like they were playing on a swing. Chapter 188, In the Same Bed This was too tempting. It's killing me. Her legs were revealed. Zhong Yi was acting like he was sitting on a cushion of needles. He watched without wanting to blink his eyes. The tiny skirt and the stockings, and finally even her panties were taken off Queen. However, of all things, this item had to be blocked by the towel hanging on the glass. Zhong Yi only saw a glimpse and he barely saw its color. It was brown. He did not see the floral patterns as it had moved too quickly. However, it looked like a translucent style and material. As the bathroom's lights were shining towards Zhong Yi, when the Heavenly Queen took her panties off, the light had shone through, revealing the panties. Hence, it could not be too thick. It could even be hollow. Behind the glass. Zhong Yuanqi was still moving and changing. This time, she was most likely taking her top and bra off. However, the angle was hidden. Suddenly, hair appeared. Zhong Yi was actually constantly tensed and on high alert. The moment he saw a bit of hair appear, which was not that far from her head, he would quickly turn his head and pretend to be staring at the window curtains in a daze. Zhong Yi was afraid that Zhong Yuanqi was spot-checking him. This fellow had been training himself with running, and he had done an uncountable number of push-ups and sit-ups as he had nothing to do at home. Hence, his body had clearly improved, resulting in very fast reactions. 5 seconds. 10 seconds. Hua Hua. The sound of water flowing sounded out. Only then would Zhong Yi dare to turn back again. The heavenly queen's hair could no longer be seen. He could see the two beautiful legs situated behind the glass. The towel covering the glass only hid Zhong Yuanqi's upper body, and as well as the middle portion of her body, but her thighs could not be covered. The towel was not long enough. There was no need to mention those legs. The heavenly queen was that slim. Her body was very balanced and it was a perfect S-shape. Zhong Yi stared unblinkingly. He could even see the sweat pores on the heavenly queen's thighs. This scene no doubt engorged his blood vessels. After washing her hair, she began to use body wash. White foam rolled down her legs, past her knees, to her calves, ankles and finally into the drain. The scene was so beautiful that he didn't dare to carry on looking. Forget it, I'll carry on looking. Zhong Yi was feasting his eyes. After a while, the sound of the water stopped. The Heavenly Queen began using a second towel to dry herself. Zhong Yi no longer dared to take the risk. He had seen almost all there was to be seen. He quickly turned around and maintained the previous posture of looking at the curtains. After a while, Bada Bada. The sound of slippers stepping on water could be heard. Are you done showering? Zhong Yi said without turning back. Yep. Zhong Yuanqi only said that. Only then did Zhong Yi turn around. He thought that the Heavenly Queen would not be wearing any clothes.
clothes such as wearing the bathrobe over her underwear, but who knew that she was completely dressed? Other than not wearing her stockings, she was no different from before she showered. She wore her red top and tiny black skirt. However, after some thought, he understood. Wearing just a bathrobe would be too revealing, and as for things like bathrobes, this crappy motel did not have such a provision. John Yi stood up, please sleep. I'll be showering now. He had not showered yesterday as he was too tired, so he had to shower today, or it would be too outrageous. John Yu and Chi ignored him, lifted her leg and went onto the bed. John Yi kept feeling nervous. A small motel and them being alone in it kept giving him nefarious thoughts. After entering the bathroom, John Yi was initially somewhat awkward. After taking off his clothes, he peeped past the towel that was being used as a temporary blockage. The Heavenly Queen's back was facing him. She was reading Zhong Yi's literary compilation. Clearly, she was in no way interested in Zhong Yi's shower. Zhong Yi was relieved. Indeed, he might have not been able to curb his desire to watch the Heavenly Queen showering, but with the role switched, how could the Heavenly Queen want to peep? Time to shower then. Zhong Yi became more relaxed. He washed his hair and then, he lathered on body shampoo. After showering, Zhong Yi realized that there was a problem. There were only two towels in the room. One was being hung on the glass, and the other one had been used by Zhong Yu Enqi. After a long hesitation, Zhong Yi grabbed the towel that was thrown on the wash basin by the Heavenly Queen. He then dried himself. It was fragrant and it was moist. He could smell the Heavenly Queen's mature fragrance. Zhong Yi was a bit in a fantasy as he wiped himself. Then, he wore his clothes but he did not put on a jacket. There are no more towels. I used the one you used. Zhong Yu and Chi remained silent as she carried on reading. Zhong Yi looked at his watch, it's past ten. Are you sleeping? Not tired, Zhong Yu and Chi said nonchalantly. No problem. You sleep as and when you please. I'll make do with the table. He knew that the Heavenly Queen might find it inconvenient, so he went to the table by the end of the bed. He had to have gentlemanly manners after all. Women first, right? Then, he tried to lie on the table. It wouldn't do. The table creaked and nearly collapsed. As it was a simple table connected to the wall, the supporting legs beneath him were not very strong, so it was unable to support John Yi's weight. Besides, the table was too narrow, and it had insufficient area for him to lie down. Zhong Yi could only sit on the table with his feet on the ground, as he leaned on the wall. Only then did Zhong Yu and Chi look at him. With a raise of her hand, she switched off the lights. In the darkness, the Heavenly Queen seemed to throw the book and slip into the bed. Zhong Yi also closed his eyes in an attempt to sleep. Since it was definitely impossible for him to leave, he had to make do with spending the night here. After an unknown period of time. There were shouts that woke Zhong Yi up. Zhong Yu Enqi. Sister Zhong. I love you. Sister Zhong, don't you fall in love. That asshole. Remove your stinky hands. Don't touch my sister Zhong. So it was the Heavenly Queen's fans. There were still people staying behind despite it being so late. But with Zhong Yi waking up, he lost his balance and slammed to the ground. It was so painful that it took a while before he got over it, sha asterisk t. Zhong Yu Enqi had also gotten up. However, she looked like she had not slept. Her eyes were still very awake. She ignored Zhong Yi and first went to the window and pulled the curtain slightly apart to peep downstairs. She then went over to Zhong Yi, how? Are you? Zhong Yi said in pain, it's okay. Sis, it was just a painful fall. After he slowly got up, how many people are there outside? Those shouts gave me a fright. John Yu Enchi said coldly, there are still about 30 to 40 people. When he saw what time it was, Zhong Yi turned speechless, it's already one in the morning. The Heavenly Queen's fans could be said to be fanatical. Zhong Yi was incomparable. Seeing that Zhong Yi was fine, Zhong Yu Enchi went back onto the bed. However, this time she lay closer to the edge. Then she looked at him, sleep on the bed. Zhong Yi exclaimed, that's inappropriate, right? Zhong Yu and she said impolitely, up to you. Hey, don't. 
I'll sleep, I'll sleep. John Yi was just being polite. It was too uncomfortable sleeping in a sitting position. His back was hurting and he had nearly fallen off. Since the Heavenly Queen had allowed him to sleep on the bed, why would Zhong Yi reject her? He was dying to sleep on the same bed with Zhong Yu Enchi. With an excited mood, Zhong Yi dragged his slippers and moved over. After lifting the blanket, he slipped under it. When the blanket was lifted, a fragrant smell from the Heavenly Queen came surging towards him. There was only one blanket on the bed, and there were no barriers underneath the blanket. Zhong Yu Enchi was lying flat on the northern end of the bed. Zhong Yi was lying on the southern end. There was quite a distance separating the two of them, but it was not that great either. After all, the bed was only that big, there was no way for them to be spaced far apart. It was quiet in the night. No one shouted from downstairs anymore. Zhong Yi heard his heart beating. Putong putong. It sounded even louder than the shouts from the fans. Then, the sounds of the Heavenly Queen's rhythmic breathing could be heard. Sister Zhong, have you fallen asleep? What's the matter? You aren't asleep? I can't sleep too. I fell hard just now. I can sleep. Man, then wait and hear me out. The results of wishing we last forever wasn't too bad, right? This week, it has also been ranked first on several boards? What do you want to say? That song of mine was snatched by you. You said you owe me one. Then, help me look for a movie to act in. I do not need to be the main lead. I definitely won't do being the main lead. Whatever side characters would be fine, as long as there are lines. Or if you are acting in any show, I'll make a guest appearance. Anyway, it's for me to gain some popularity. I don't have any works these days, so my popularity has fallen. John Yi's thoughts were that the poetry compilation was not enough. He had to work harder and expose himself to the masses more. And the other main reason was that he still had not decided on what to do next. Are you planning on going down the filming route in the future? Not really. I just want to be a temporary guest and give it a try. Oh. Can you? Wait for my news. All right, then I'll thank you first. Although Zhong Yi, Zhong Yi and she said wait for her news, Zhong Yi knew that. Her saying that meant there were no problems. Others might not have the power, but she did. Actually, Zhong Yi did not plan on developing as an actor this year, nor did he plan on singing, let alone directing. People who majored in acting might not turn out good, let alone Zhong Yi. He did not know a sure asterisk T about acting. For singing, Zhong Yi did not have any singing ability either. Part of singing was learned while the other part was honed through practice, but he was far from passable. His singing wasn't pleasurable to the ears. There was no need to talk about directing. Ignoring directing a movie, even if a camera was given to Zhong Yi now, he would have no idea how to use it. He did not know a thing. These jobs were things Zhong Yi had to do, but it was not the right time. It was because he lacked the strength and ability. Unfortunately, despite Zhong Yi having extremely good broadcasting abilities, no television station dared to hire him. He was currently depressed and he had no future goals. Hence, he could only put up with second best, by first acting in a guest role. At least, he could ensure his popularity would not diminish. He needed to first maintain his popularity before deciding on the future. With proper matters discussed, the atmosphere in the room turned silent. This was the same bed he and the Heavenly Queen were sleeping in. After a while, Zhong Yuanqi might have fallen asleep. As she rolled over, she threw the blanket away. She was wearing her clothes to sleep, so it was definitely hot. In the end, Zhong Yi's eyes had a feast. His eyes had gotten used to the dark and he could see very clearly. With this role of the Heavenly Queen, she was facing Zhong Yi, and she was much closer to him instantaneously. One of Zhong Yu Enchi's beautiful legs was bent in front of her. Her short black skirt was not long to begin with, so with her legs bent, a large gap in her skirt opened up. Inside the black skirt, a brown fabric appeared. She had exposed herself. Zhong Yi's mind was perturbed as he focused his gaze into the black skirt. Then, Zhong Yu Enchi, who was sleeping, adjusted her body's posture. At that moment, her red top was squeezed. The opening to her blouse revealed a deep cleavage. 
A crevice appeared near the buttons on her chest, revealing a bit of her brown bra. Momentarily, he recalled a phrase of Shakespeare's. To touch? Or not to touch? That is the question. Chapter 189, Caught by a Bunch of Reporters? The next morning. Around 9 to 10 o'clock. Zhong Yi mockingly laughed, you're awake? Yes, the heavenly queen answered coldly. You didn't sleep well? I can see your dark eye circles. Zhong Yi said. I will make do with it, the heavenly queen commanded, go see if there are still people downstairs. Zhong Yi got off the bed and he went over, pulling the curtain slightly apart. He said impatiently, there are still several dozens of people. It looks like the reporters have changed shifts. Looks like we won't be leaving today either? Let's eat first, Zhong Yu Enqi said. Zhong Yi was hungry too, order take away. Sure, let me see. He checked online and made a few calls. In the end, none of the eateries were willing to deliver takeaway as the area was too isolated. Even fast food restaurants were not willing to deliver here. Out of desperation, Zhong Yi called the motel front desk, Hello, what can we eat over here? Bread? Instant noodles? Biscuits? Okay, please give me two sets of everything. I want a bottle of cola and a bottle of mineral water too, please deliver it to my room, thank you. The heavenly queen put on her sunglasses, don't let anyone come in. I know. Zhong Yi put on his coat and walked to the door to wait. Momentarily, the cleaning lady came to deliver the food. When the door was opened, she handed the things over, the money will be deducted from the deposit. Oh yes, are you checking out today? Zhong Yi messed up his hair on purpose so that no one would recognize him. But it was obviously unnecessary, as even if his face was not covered, the cleaning lady would still not be able to recognize him. Zhong Yi thought for a while, then said, I won't be checking out today, I will stay another day. The cleaning lady said, then you need to go downstairs to hand over the money. Zhong Yi said quickly said, I'm too lazy to go down, I will hand the money to you. All right then, the cleaning took the money and counted it, do you need housekeeping? No need, no need. Zhong Yi did not dare to let anyone into the room, oh yes, why is the thermostat turned off? It's pretty cold and rather gloomy. The temperature's turning cold. The cleaning lady explained, the thermostat is externally controlled. There's only electricity after 9 p.m. It was obviously to save power and after explaining, the cleaner went downstairs. Back in the room, Zhong Yi put the food onto the bed, what do you want to eat? Zhong Yu and Chi took a look and pointed to the instant noodles. She did not even say a word. Zhong Yi glanced at her, then went to boil some water. He prepared the instant noodles and placed them at the dressing table in front of the bed. He took some bread for himself and he had some hot water to go along with, I think today won't be the day too, we won't be able to find a chance to slip away. If you have something on today, you can call your manager with my phone. The heavenly queen was eating her instant noodles with a not too happy expression. She still ate it anyway, use your phone to call? And tell her that I am with you at the motel? Zhong Yi realized that her manager had his number. A call would reveal everything. This was not something that they could let anyone know even if there was nothing between the two of them. After the meal. It was almost noon. The two of them were doing nothing, there was basically nothing to do at all. Zhong Yi switched the old CRT television on. There were only about 20 channels, but every channel was only showing static. The reception was probably terrible, so there was no way to watch anything. The Heavenly Queen lay in bed under her blanket. She had already read Zhong Yi's compilation twice. There weren't many words to begin with anyway, so she didn't bother to read it again. Zhong Yi switched the television off. It was getting cold as it looked to be almost raining outside. He rubbed his hands together to keep warm. He did not wear much as he came out in a rush last night. Phone, the heavenly queen said. What's the matter? Zhong Yi blinked. Zhong Yu and she did not explain, but repeated, phone. Here. Zhong Yi uttered as he threw it to her. Zhong Yu and she began dialing some numbers, after recalling for a long while, the call finally connected. The expression on her face changed to one of a smiling one, hello, is this director Jiang? 
It was a young man's voice on the other side, yo, it's Sister Jong. Great, you can still recognize my voice. Ha ha. Jong Yuanqi said. Director Jiang said, I listened to your songs growing up, how could I not know? Oh yes, there's news of you being at a motel that's spreading online now, is this true? John Yuanqi laughed, it's just the company doing some publicity. I'm at home, but because too many people are calling me, I switched my phone off. I borrowed a friend's phone to call you, there's something I need your help with. The movie that you are directing, isn't it almost done? I heard that there are a few scenes that you need to reshoot. Do you need an actor? I would like to recommend someone, John Yi. I don't know if you know him, but he has a little bit of fame in Beijing. Zhong Yi? The one who wrote a song for you, that Zhong Yi? Director Jiang remembered, I know who he is, I have some some impression. I think he's really good at writing poetry. Zhong Yuanqi said, yes, you can give him a supporting role. Director Jiang hesitated and said, I'm directing a wuxia movie, The Rolls. I still owe him one for that song, I don't care whether it's wuxia or not. You need to help me repay him this favor, ha ha. That's settled then? Zhong Yuanqi said laughingly. Director Jiang laughed bitterly, all right then, since Sister Zhong has spoken, we will have some discussions first. When the time comes. Zhong Yuanqi said, don't wait until the time comes, I will ask him to report for filming tomorrow. That settles it, if you have another movie in the future, I will do a cameo role for you. Ha ha, then that will be great. It's done, settled. Director Jiang did not have any complaints with that. After hanging up, she threw the phone back to Zhong Yi who caught it. He immediately said, thanks, Sister Zhong. He had not expected it to be done so quickly. With the call ended, Zhong Yi Wench's amicable expression had changed back to the usual cold-faced expression. She hugged her own shoulders before saying, we need to find a way out by tonight. I have some activities in Hong Kong and Taiwan tomorrow, it's an afternoon flight. I can't cancel them. Zhong Yi wondered, how do we leave? You think of a way, after saying, Zhong Yi Wenqi laid down and had her afternoon nap. Zhong Yi also lay down to think, but as he cracked his brains, he fell asleep. At night. It was 1 a.m. Zhong Yi wore his clothes properly and Zhong Yi Wenqi also wore her heels. The two of them had something to eat before Zhong Yi pulled the curtains aside to take a look outside. There were much fewer people now. The fans were almost all gone since they did not have the time to keep waiting aimlessly. The others left were those reporters with nothing to do, either from the television station or the newspapers. They had shifts of two or three people waiting there without moving. Some were hidden from view, like in the car or the staircase landings. They were holding on to their cameras and waiting patiently for things to happen. Going out through the main entrance, impossible. Zhong Yi breathed in deeply, you wait for me here, I will go take a look. What's the plan? Zhong Yu Enqi asked. One step at a time. Zhong Yi already had a plan, but he did not dare tell the Heavenly Queen. He was afraid that the Heavenly Queen would not take him seriously, so he went ahead to scout first. To be safe, Zhong Yi waited for the Heavenly Queen to not pay attention before he took out a save crystal from the inventory of his game ring. Two save crystals and one lucky bread. This was all inside Zhong Yi's inventory. He had gotten them some time ago through the lottery. Zhong Yi knew the importance of the matter, so he didn't dare be careless. He crushed the save crystal with his hands. It took effect. Progress saved. Save record retains 30 minutes. Zhong Yi pulled the door open and walked out without making a sound. It was already midnight. There was no one in the corridor so Zhong Yi relaxed his senses a little. He quickly walked towards the escape stairway as the elevator was definitely a no-go. It was too enclosed and there were too many factors to consider. But just as he was approaching the escape stairway, the room beside it opened without a warning. The person who opened it was a middle-aged man holding a camera, there were still three or four youths in the room. They were obviously reporters. Zhong Yi kept walking, he was numb. So, they had laid an ambush. The middle-aged man had come out due to hearing a noise. He wanted to know who was passing by. These reporters had been waiting outside in the day, 
but at noon, many people had checked out. Naturally, they could get a room and gain entry into the building. He did not expect to see headline news the moment he opened the door. After a momentary shock, he found the person familiar. Then after some recollection, he got excited, it's Zhong Yi. Teacher Zhong, what are you doing here? Are you with the Heavenly Queen? He chased after him. Zhong Yi kept going. The man was busily taking photos. Catcher, catcher. Upon hearing that, several other reporters who were in the room also realized that this was big news. The Heavenly Queen and Zhong Yi had worked together before, the two of them had now appeared at this motel. This was definitely unusual. They gave chase. Zhong Yi had already gone to the second floor through the escape stairway. On the second floor, there was another reporter. He was probably not part of the group from upstairs, but Hu was probably just having a smoke along the corridor. But Zhong Yi did not see him as he did not have a line of sight to the corridor. When he heard no commotion, he went outside into the corridor. In the end, he had direct eye contact with that reporter in the distance. Ah. Zhong Yi, said the thin reporter excitedly. Zhong Yi turned his head and continued walking down the stairs, but there were even more people on the first floor. Some were seated on the staircase reading newspapers, some were leaning against the wall and napping. This route had been sealed off. The elevator was probably the same too, there would probably be people keeping watch. The bunch of people also saw Zhong Yi now, many of them did not recognize him, but there were some who did. Once they shouted his name, everyone's eyes lighted up. Zhong Yi turned back to the second floor. The reporters from upstairs had now chased after him down the stairs while those from the first floor chased after him up the stairs. But Zhong Yi totally ignored them. No matter how they took his pictures and asked questions, Zhong Yi just continued walking coldly. He turned the corner at the second floor. Firstly, he wanted to know the locations of all the reporters. Secondly, he wanted to check the route. About 20 minutes later, a bunch of the reporters had surrounded Zhong Yi by now. They were joined by the others from the yard, this included a number of Zhong Yuanche's fans. After a day and a night, many of her fans had already left. But there were still some hardcore fans who had nothing better to do who stayed on. Teacher Zhong Yi? Why is it you? Teacher Zhong, why are you here? What's going on between you and Sister Zhong? Where is the Heavenly Queen? Is she in your room? Can you please explain? What the F asterisk asterisk K? The Heavenly Queen came to the motel to meet you? This, this, when did the two of you start? Teacher Zhong, please answer us. The flashes kept going off. It was no different from a press conference. Everyone was either questioning or taking pictures. This was already a mess now, many of the people who had seen Zhong Yi appear were in disbelief. Zhong Yi and Zhong Yuanqi? How can it be? That was such a terrible match. Zhong Yi knew that he couldn't explain himself, but he also knew that he did not need to explain. He gave a smile and looked around at all the reporters. He then said something very puzzling, even if I told you, all of you wouldn't know anything the next moment. Eh? What did that mean? Teacher Zhong, please answer straightforwardly. What are you and the Heavenly Queen doing here? There's no such coincidences. Zhong Yi was not nervous at all. He was extraordinarily calm. He did not bother himself with these people and he lowered his head to open the game screen up. When the virtual game screen came up, he lightly tapped onto a button, load file. Reading save. Reading completed. Chapter 190, Prophetic Escape. It turned fuzzy all around him. The chattering noise from the reporters had disappeared suddenly. Room 318 When Zhong Yi came back to his senses, the dizziness had gone away. He looked left and right, and he found himself back in the familiar room. It was back to the point when he had saved. Still not leaving? Zhong Yuanqi said behind him. Zhong Yi looked behind and said, let's go together. Zhong Yuanqi frowned, didn't you say that you were going to scout ahead? No need for that, let's go. The faster the better. Zhong Yi had already scouted. But he did so at a time that the Heavenly Queen and anyone else would never know of. Zhong Yuanqi didn't say a word but she followed along. Your heels. 
Zhong Yi lowered his head to look at the pair of beautiful red stiletto heels, you can't wear them, it will be too loud. Hold it in your hands? Zhong Yuanqi bent down and removed her high heels. Don't move after I have opened the door. Follow my gestures accordingly, saying that, Zhong Yi proceeded to open the door, but he did not step out. He took a coin out of his pocket and flicked it outside with his finger. Ta, ta, the coin landed on the corridor's carpet and made a sound. It sounded like footstep sounds. The heavenly queen was about to open her mouth to ask, not knowing what was going on. The next moment, a door beside the escape stairway slammed open, it was the middle-aged reporter who had discovered Zhong Yi previously. He came outside and looked around but he saw no one. Wondering aloud, he could only go back inside and shut the door. The soundproofing was not too good as they heard the conversation in the room. What's the matter, Brother Xiao? Nothing, I thought there was someone there. It's already the middle of the night. There's definitely nothing to expect anymore. Right, I think the Heavenly Queen isn't here, the chances are too slim. Even if there's a low probability, we have to keep watch. What if we really discover them, wouldn't that be big news? Making use of the time they were chatting, Zhong Yi signaled to the Heavenly Queen to move out into the corridor. Zhong Yi gestured for her to keep her head low as there were peep holes on the doors. It was safer to stay low. One step. Ten steps. The two of them made it to the stairway and walked down quietly. The Heavenly Queen holding her shoes asked, how did you know that there were reporters in that room? Zhong Yi quickly gestured, sure. Zhong Yuanqi had a doubtful expression but she remained quiet. Zhong Yi did not say a word. He just quietly stayed at the second floor stairway and waited. He did not show himself or intend to walk forward. After about a minute, there was a sudden sound on the second floor's corridor. It was the sound of someone stepping on a cigarette but to extinguish it. A cough from a youth could be heard. Bang, the sound of the door closing, then silence. Zhong Yuanqi looked at Zhong Yi in surprise. She did not understand how Zhong Yi knew that there was someone there. Zhong Yi of course did not answer. When he saw that the Heavenly Queen wanted to go down the stairs, he grabbed her arm and shook his head. That wasn't the right place to go, it was full of people. Zhong Yi led the way in front as they walked onto the second floor's corridor. Zhong Yuanqi looked on but she could only follow along. On the left were the rooms, the elevator, and the entrance area. But on the right? There was only one room. The sign on it said that it was a staff room, a place for the staff. Placed outside of it was a broom and some unwashed bed linen sheets. Why are we here? The Heavenly Queen whispered softly. Zhong Yi said, open the door. How do I open it? The Heavenly Queen asked. Just follow my instructions. Zhong Yi said. Zhong Yi walked to the side window. The windows here were the old metal wire grill type. He easily removed a few strands of wire from of it. After fiddling with it a bit with some fast hand movements, he made the wire into the length he wanted and proceeded to slot it into the staff room's lock. Zhong Yi had eaten several of the lockpicking skill experience books before. It had really become of good use, it was really a case of having more skills without additional burden. It was unexpected that he could use this skill in such a critical moment. The motel's other rooms were all unlocked with swipe cards. They were more high-tech, the locks were operated digitally too. With Zhong Yi's lock-picking skills, he wouldn't be able to open those kinds of locks. But for the workers' rooms, they were had the traditional lock sets. Maybe it was more convenient for the staff to use a traditional lock and key. K-A-C-H-A. The door was unlocked without much effort. The room was dark and of course, he did not switch on the lights. Staying hidden was of utmost priority. Zhong Yi had considered the layout and he knew that there wasn't anyone in this room. It was a storeroom. He led Zhong Yuanqi with familiarity inside, then, he closed the door gently. Zhong Yuanqi looked at him, that was pretty nifty. Zhong Yi said nervously, I'm not that good. Zhong Yuanqi said, I don't think that this is your first time doing such things. Haha, <laughs> I'm a man of many talents, you know that. Zhong Yi changed the subject and walked to the bed and pulled the curtains aside, let's go. Zhong Yuanqi narrowed her eyes and asked, how? 
Only at this moment did Zhong Yi inform her of the plan, we will not go to the first floor. There are many reporters waiting by the stairway. The entrance is out of the question too. There will be people at the elevator too. If we want to leave this place, we will have to jump out of the window. This is the second floor, it's not that high up. We are at the staff room and this side of the windows goes out to the back of the motel. That side is blocked by a metal fence, so no reporter can get in. If we go out from here, it would be the safest option. Moreover, no one has thought of going to the back to keep watch, because no one would be expecting that the famous heavenly queen to escape from the windows. In their minds, this is something that would never happen. Zhong Yuanqi frowned, jump through the window? Zhong Yi assured her, don't worry, it won't be dangerous. I will go down first and catch you. You can slowly climb down, I will take care of your safety. Zhong Yuanqi shook her head without saying anything. Quickly, if we don't leave now, there won't be another chance. Who cares about face now? Zhong Yi encouraged her, I will definitely catch you. Zhong Yuanqi gave him a skeptical look. Actually, Zhong Yi did not have any confidence too. The Heavenly Queen was not plump, but neither was she very light. She was rather tall so her weight couldn't be that light. Zhong Yi thought about his arm strength which was rather lousy. But in this situation, this was the only way. Zhong Yi tugged at the windows, and did not wait for the Heavenly Queen's agreement. Jumping onto the window sill, he stood there. Looking at the ground that wasn't that far off, he flipped around and squatted down. With his hands against the window sill, he lowered himself bit by bit, before letting his body extend fully. He then let go. Smash! He landed on the ground. Zhong Yi did not manage to balance himself and fell down. His legs were hurting. He only managed to stand up after a long while, looking embarrassed with a red face. Seeing Zhong Yi in this pathetic state, Zhong Yuanqi froze at the side of the window. She could only muster a cold laugh and muttered something along the lines of, A guy like you already took so much effort just to jump down, what do you expect from a female comrade like me? Zhong Yi whispered and signaled, Hurry! I will catch you! The Heavenly Queen said, Think of another way. Zhong Yi pondered a little. To ask a woman to jump like this was indeed asking too much of her. She did not have the strength nor courage to do it. She was the heavenly queen after all, not a brute like Zhong Yi who could take a fall. After some thinking, Zhong Yi had an idea. He looked at the staff room on the first floor and with a lift, he stood on the window of the first floor. The window was not locked, so it allowed Zhong Yi to grab onto it. Then he looked up and faced the heavenly queen, saying, Sister Zhong, you come down bit by bit. I'll hold you, so there certainly won't be any problems. There was a few seconds of hesitation from the top. Finally, Zhong Yuanqi's figure appeared. Clearly, she had made up her mind. Her hand stretched out from the second floor's window and handed her pair of high heels to Zhong Yi. Zhong Yi tiptoed and after trying very hard, he grabbed the high heels. He then lowered his head and kept them properly. Zhong Yuanqi was already on the window sill. Her motions were not as smooth as Zhong Yi, but as a woman, it was already pretty fast. Without any hesitation, Zhong Yuanqi did the same motions Zhong Yi did. Behind the motel was the perimeter of a small district. It was also an out of the way garden, filled with grass. Zhong Yi did not need to pick the lock. A glance was enough to tell that the lock had rusted due to years of disuse. With a hard push, the rusty lock fell apart. You go first. I'll circle around the district and drive the car to pick you up. After saying that, he wore his sunglasses. After he circled around and entered the small district, he noticed that there were still many people waiting by the motel's entrance. They did not notice that someone had come in from behind. They clearly didn't realize that the Heavenly Queen would escape from the windows. Besides, Zhong Yi had even used a save item in order to prevent any mishaps. Carry on waiting, guys. Zhong Yi ignored them. He went to the parking lot to pick his car up and drove off. He did not attract the attention of others. Even if others saw his car, they would not have recognized him. After all, Zhong Yi was not as famous as Zhong Yuanqi. It was not at the level where he was placed under a microscope. Outside. It was already midnight, the roads were deserted. 
Zhong Yi drove over to the trees where Zhong Yuanqi was waiting. After pulling over, the Heavenly Queen quickly got into the car and closed the door. Phew! They were finally out. Zhong Yi breathed a sigh of relief, Are you hurt? I'm okay. Where are you going? Bei Cheng, just stop me at the Lishui Bridge. Someone will come and fetch me. Zhong Yuanqi was probably tired as she shut her eyes for a nap. The past two days had taken its toll on her and Zhong Yi. They reached the venue. The Heavenly Queen took Zhong Yi's almost flat phone and contacted her management through the internet. The car stopped and she got off. She sat on a bench at the roadside to wait. Zhong Yi did not leave. Instead, he parked at a distance and waited for her to leave safely. Otherwise, he wouldn't be at ease. A few minutes later, a luxury car that Zhong Yi had seen before but could not put a name to stopped in front of Zhong Yuanqi. The Heavenly Queen stood up and got into the car. Looking through the glass, there were two women in the car. Upon seeing the Heavenly Queen, they began their chattering, one looking like she was at a loss whether to laugh or cry, another looking like she was bearing a grudge. They looked super anxious. Whereas Zhong Yuanqi's face was full of smiles, she spoke very calmly with them. He couldn't hear them, so he did not know what they were talking about. But when Zhong Yi was preparing to drive off, he suddenly noticed that Zhong Yuanqi had raised her hand while in the luxury car's back seat. She did not turn her head, but it was obvious that her hands were waving. In the end, she put it down without attracting the attention of her assistants. Was she saying goodbye to me? Zhong Yi smiled. He felt that the relationship between him and Zhong Yuanqi had become even more complicated. It could be said that they had become closer, at least, they could now be considered friends. They were stuck together, in the same room, and slept on the same bed together. They escaped together and he gave her a shoulder ride. They even nearly created a scandal together. All these images floated in front of Zhong Yi. After the storm passed, a feeling of warmth took over. Especially that last wave from Zhong Yuanqi. It was like a farewell gesture between two soldiers in arms who had battled for two days. It made Zhong Yi feel that the Heavenly Queen's indifferent bad temper to be not as irritating as before. Good temper? Bad temper? A lot of people who hated Zhong Yi scolded him, saying that his temper was as bad as a hooligan's. But those who really knew and understood Zhong Yi did not feel that his temper was bad at all. It was just a matter of perception. Chapter 191 Teacher Little Zhong joins the film crew. The next day. Morning. The wind was getting stronger as it blew across the windows and made ghostly howls. After waking up and showering, Zhong Yi received a message. It was sent from Zhong Yuanqi's number. Without mentioning the subject, she only sent him an address. It was the address of the outskirts of Beijing where the movie studios were located. The message also included a telephone number as well as a time. There were two words beside the telephone number, assistant director. As for the time, it was indicated as before four in the afternoon. The Heavenly Queen must have arranged it and meant for him to report there. It was still early, so Zhong Yi went online to research on the movie. Although the filming was not over yet nor was it about to be screened, some information were already available before the premiere. The movie was called, The Great Pugilistic World. It was probably not a movie from Zhong Yi's world, anyway he had never heard of this title before. The movie synopsis was about a youth in ancient times whose parents were killed. He dragged partners along with him, traversing Wudang and beating Shaolin to avenge them. It was the stereotypical revenge genre movie. Of course, that was how the online summary was written. As for the details, he was not sure either. Zhong Yi set off in the afternoon. He did not drive as he knew that he would be with the filming crew for the next few days. He did not know where they would be headed to anyway, driving would instead be inconvenient. He packed some clothes along and took a cab to a bus depot. From there, he took a long-distance bus to the destination. In the suburbs. At a certain movie studio. It was a little deserted and cheap looking here. Zhong Yi looked around for a full day before he walked a distance and found the studio. This place was usually open. It could be considered as a tourist destination for visitors. But most of the time, like today, the studios were shut off to the public. 
the outside was densely packed with cars. It was estimated that there were about two or three filming crews inside so it was not considered a small place. He reached the gates. Who are you? A crew member looked at him. John Yi said, I'm here to take part in the shoot for The Great Pugilistic World. Dot. The crew member waved his hand, if you don't have a pass, you aren't allowed in. I'm sorry. John Yi was annoyed, he could only make a call to the deputy director with the number in the message. He was probably busy as no one answered at first. It might have been put on silent mode. Zhong Yi smoked a cigarette before trying again ten minutes later. This time, the call was answered, Hello, Assistant Director, I am Zhong Yi. Sister Zhong asked me to contact you. Zhong Yi? Oh, I remember. Hello. I've already reached the outside of the movie studios, but they won't let me in. What do you say? All right, wait there for a while. I've work to attend to so I can't leave here. I will get someone to bring you in. After a short while, a 40 to 50 year old man came outside. He had a simple face and looked very honest. But he had shifty eyes which made him look rather dishonest at the same time. It felt like they were eyes of a thief. John Yi saw him and found him to be quite familiar looking. He had a rather good memory and somehow felt like he had seen him on TV last week at his parents' house. He had a minor role on a TV serial. It was a city life drama. If he was not wrong, this man was acting as the main character's good friend's father. John Yi did not understand this world's dramas, he had only watched a few. But it was a coincidence that he had seen those few scenes before and the man was standing right in front of him. He was rather good and could act in a funny role. Zhong Yi? Yao Jintsai walked towards him. Zhong Yi reached out his hand, that's me, and you are? Yao Jintsai smiled and shook his hands, I am Yao Jintsai, you may call me old Yao. The deputy director asked me to come fetch you. Yao Jintsai? Biting building materials? Literally translated, hearing this name, you would know immediately this person couldn't be young. Yo, that's too much trouble for you. Zhong Yi smiled. I've watched your shows before. Your acting was really good, you totally brought out the happiness with that role of a father. Maybe Yao Jintsai did not expect someone to know him as he had been acting for many years but remained obscure. He was forever a member of the supporting cast, so he laughed and said, not too bad, not too bad. After that, he passed a staff card to him and they both strutted into the studio. Then, Yao Jintsai spoke with the air of a veteran to Zhong Yi, little Zhong Ah, you are a newbie. I've been acting for so many years and I've never heard of you. Zhong Yi smiled. You can say that. Looking at you. You must have just graduated? From Beijing Film Academy? Majored in performing arts? Yao Jintsai asked. Zhong Yi said briefly, Beijing Broadcasting Institute only did Yao Jintsai made an O sound, broadcasting, the drama film and television faculty there isn't too bad, but the best faculty there is still radio broadcast studies faculty, yeah. After saying that, he lowered his voice and said, I only heard about it today morning, the director had arranged a pretty good supporting role for you. There are a few fight scenes and several lines for you. Your surname is Zhong. Is that producer Zhong your dad? A. Can't be. You don't look alike. Oh, are you the deputy director's relative? Old Yao looked like an honest man, but he spoke without any propriety and felt like an old slacker. Zhong Yi said, no, I don't know anyone from the film crew. Yao Jintsai said wonderingly, then that's weird. This movie can be considered quite a big production, they wouldn't use a newbie in it. You are a lucky kid, getting this job just after graduation. Even a Beijing Film Academy performing arts major would usually need to go through six months or a year's worth of hardship, and they still might not even be able to get a role. Even if they did, they can only get a minor role, ha ha. You better grab hold of this opportunity. People like us who don't have looks or outstanding features, if we want to survive in this industry, we have to take every chance. If you don't know something, you can ask me. Old Yao was very sociable, he would say whatever he thought and didn't take Zhong Yi to be an outsider. This made Zhong Yi smile wryly but he could tell that comrade Old Yao was very nice to him, thanks, Uncle Yao. 
What Uncle Yao, call me Old Yao. Okay, Old Yao, ha ha. That's how it should be, don't be modest with me. Stay around me in the future, we will have good food and wine together. After exchanging a few words, the old and the young duo were already putting arms to shoulders. Zhong Yi rather liked him, he realized that old Yao was similar to him. His words did not carry too much meaning, so there was nothing to be on guard for. The movie studio was very big. How big was it? It was very big. A construction set from the 60s or 70s, a set from the Republic of China years, a town set of the ancient times. The sets placed side by side made one dizzy from seeing them. He reached where the filming crew of The Great Pugilistic World was. The camera seemed to have stopped rolling, a few actors who were wearing ancient costumes were seated by the corner, drinking water. Director Jiang was facing them and explaining the scene and giving some pointers. Over the other side was a crew in charge of set layout. There were many people, numbering around 30 to 40 people. Assistant director, I brought the person here, Yao Jensai said. The assistant director looked at Zhong Yi, then walked over to greet, Teacher Zhong, you're here? The script has been prepared, please take a look at your lines. I will get someone to do your makeup for you. Zhong Yi took the script, okay. The assistant director said worriedly, there's a fight scene, so there's a possibility you might get hurt, you. I will follow your arrangements, I'm okay with anything. Zhong Yi agreed without hesitation. Teacher Zhong? What teacher? Yao Jinsai was stunned as he did not understand. At this moment, a crew staff's eye lit up. He quickly took a book over, Teacher Zhong, I've been waiting for you the whole day. I knew you were coming, so I had my book and pen ready. Can I have your autograph? His accent was that of a Beijing local, so obviously, he knew who Zhong Yi was. Sure. Zhong Yi did not say much and signed it for him. Ayo, isn't this teacher little Zhong, a girl who had a minor role as suggested by her costume, came running over. You are here for the filming too? Why didn't anyone tell me? My dad and mum are super fans of yours. I see them watching lecture room every day when I go home. They even said that the new lecture can't be compared to yours, so they don't intend to watch it anymore. They keep bugging me to download your collection of Zhong Yi's analysis of the Three Kingdoms. Zhong Yi smiled. Thanks to your dad and mum for their support. Come, let's have a photo together, said the girl. All right. Zhong Yi stood shoulder to shoulder with her. The girl took out her phone and snapped a picture before going back to memorize her script. Director Jiang also saw Zhong Yi but didn't say much. He could be considered as a second-tier director in the country and even that would make him more well-known than Zhong Yi. He was only a minor character, so he didn't need to be too bothered about him. He definitely needed to accede to Zhong Yuanqi's request, but Zhong Yi was not that big a star for him prioritize him. Zhong Yi did have some fame in Beijing but not in other places. For the movie that director Jiang was directing, the main leads and supporting cast were all easily more well-known than Zhong Yi. They were at minimum B-list or C-list celebrities. This was why director Jiang did not bother too much about Zhong Yi, he was just doing the Heavenly Queen a favor by arranging a role for him. That was all there was to it. And so, the others were confused. A change of profession often meant a different field of knowledge. They were not in the same profession as Zhong Yi from the beginning. With the fact that most of the film crew were not living in Beijing as they had to travel all around the country for filming, most of the people there did not know Zhong Yi or where he was from. Yao Jinsai was one of them, he was dazed. Wasn't little Zhong a newbie? Why did some people want his autograph and have photos together? Thinking of the time when he first joined the film crew, only a cleaning auntie liked his shows and had asked him for an autograph. He did not get such VIP treatment. Little Yang. Yao Jinsai strolled around to the girl's side, who is this Zhong Yi? The girl said doubtfully, Uncle Yao, don't you live in Beijing, how can you not know who he is? Yao Jinsai said, I've been away to the south for filming for the past few months. I don't use the internet either, I don't get things like new technology anyways, because of my age. The girl laughed, if you want to know about Zhong Yi steeds, I don't think I can finish telling you about them today. In any case, he is very famous in Beijing. 
He has written novels, done radio hosting, TV hosting, been a lecturer, produced a public service advertisement and can match couplets. Especially in the field of poetry and scolding people, teacher Zhong Yi is unbeatable. After the live broadcast incident recently, teacher Zhong Yi already has no opponents left. It could be said that she was very familiar about Zhong Yi's deeds, so she explained it briefly to Yao Jintsai. Scolding a colleague on Weibo. Scolding his unit at the Silver Microphone Awards. Scolding the Writers' Association at the couplet competition. Scolding a leader during a live broadcast on television. After hearing all of that, Yao Jintsai was immediately stunned to the heavens. F asterisk asterisk K. This teacher Little Zhong, is such a talent. Chapter 192, Zhong Yi's Real and Fake Kung Fu. The Movie Studio. At a tiny corner, on a row of benches. Zhong Yi was sitting there reading the script. It contained the lines for his role. It was simple, just a few lines. The difficulty was in the fight scenes. To Zhong Yi, who was filming for the first time, this was a challenge. But he believed that he could do it well. As Zhong Yi always said, confidence was very important. If you did not believe in yourself, then you will lose confidence and as a result, you will not be able to do it. Because you had already lost half the battle before you fought it. This was a very intriguing thing, if you had the confidence, then you would surely be able to do it. This was not bullshit, nor was it scaremongering. In the field of psychology, there had been studies on it. A plebeian could never become a rich handsome person. It was only fantasy? It was definitely not the case. So what if he was a plebeian? So what if a plebeian was weak and ugly? As long as one firmly believed in one's success, as long as one firmly believed that he could do it, then there would be a day that he would become an extremely confident weak and ugly plebeian. Little Zhong. Yao Jintsai came over. Zhong Yi kept his script, hey, what's the matter? Yao Jintsai said in a speechless manner, didn't you say you were a rookie? But I am a rookie, Zhong Yi said with his eyes blinking. Only then did Yao Jintsai realize that since Zhong Yi had never acted in movies, he was indeed a complete newcomer in the filming industry. I only just got to know that you are pretty famous in Beijing. Zhong Yi hurriedly said, it's nothing. I can't compare with you. This was not him being modest. If he were to really compete with Yao Jintsai in fame, despite always being a supporting character, how many shows had Yao Jintsai acted in over all those years? He did have some fame in the country. Well, although it was not that much, he was much better than Zhong Yi who was only known in the Beijing circles. At least he was not as limited. Fine, Yao Jintsai laughed, in Beijing, there are definitely more people who know you than me. Nice, you are promising. You can even compose poems? Nothing serious, Zhong Yi said. After hearing of Zhong Yi's deeds, Yao Jintsai increasingly found that Zhong Yi's attitude matched his appetite. He sat beside Zhong Yi and put his arms around his shoulder. Quickly tell me the process of how you smacked the face of your television station's leader. Ha ha, it was to the point of every television station in the country not daring to hire you. Forcing you to act? Kid, you sure are impressive. You are so frisky. Not bad, not bad. You have a bit of my style like me back in the day. You also did something like that? No? Then what was that about your style? Hi, it was just an analogy. The old and young duo had gotten close through their chatting. They even exchanged telephone numbers and were like old pals. Suddenly, a stout man in his thirties walked over. He was the film crew's martial arts director. He looked very strong and it was clear at a glance that he practiced Kung Fu. Which one of you is Zhong Yi? I am. Zhong Yi stood up with the script in hand. The martial arts director glanced at him and said with a speechless manner, you are acting as young hero Chen. This was Zhong Yi's role. He nodded, that's right. The martial arts director sized him up and then squeezed his arms. After some evaluation, he turned and left without saying a word. He went directly to the assistant director, assistant director, are you sure you didn't make a mistake? That Zhong Yi is acting as young hero Chen? He won't do as young hero Chen. His small in size and his attacks would look weak like a girl's. You can't get a substitute for a supporting actor. 
and even if you looked for one, no one is suitable. How are we to film? The assistant director looked at him and said, if you think he won't do, then train him well. Teach him the motions. The role has been decided, so there won't be any changes. The rest is your job. The martial arts director said, but I can't make something out of nothing. Let's not talk about his looks, just his physique is terrible. It will have an adverse effect on the filming. The two began to quarrel. John Yi felt helpless. Man, he had been looked down upon on the first day of filming. Finally, the martial arts director came back without any success. He looked at Zhong Yi and said with a sense of powerlessness, Have you filmed a martial arts scene before? Zhong Yi shook his head. The martial arts director asked, Have you acted before? Zhong Yi shook his head again. The martial arts director said, Have you practiced dancing before? Zhong Yi still shook his head. The martial arts director slapped himself in the forehead. Man, he was useless on all fronts. This movie had quite a large investment and was considered a medium to large production, hence the requirements of the actors were very high. It was not like low-cost martial arts movies where a punch or kick would do. If they did so, people would die laughing at them. Hence, the actors they found had some foundation in martial arts or had acted in martial arts movies. Even the main lead could not be too shabby. He had to have the arms and the figure. Furthermore, a substitute could be used for the main lead, but how could one find a substitute for a supporting actor? The martial arts director had a headache. Yao Jintsai was the funny fellow in the film crew, so he could easily speak with anyone. This lad is my good friend, please take care of him. The martial arts director said, Uncle Yao, young hero Chen has quite a few scenes in the movie. It's at least a minute and half of screen time. There are quite a lot of advanced movements required, but he... Zhong Yi summoned his courage and said, why don't we try it out? The martial arts director found a sword and passed it to him, wave the sword twice for me to see. Zhong Yi took it over and immediately felt high-spirited. With a flick of his wrist, he caused sword beams to flicker in the air, all right, those were just adjectives with artistic embellishment. Actually, he just waved the sword in the air. This was a real sword and due to the soft nature of a sword, this shake of the sword nearly stabbed Yao Jintsai. Yao Jintsai was so scared out of his wits that he retreated a few steps, take it easy, bro. The martial arts director then instructed Zhong Yi to do a few other actions. However, when Zhong Yi followed his instructions, it was still a mismatch. His person and the sword were not well coordinated. There was no elegance, nor was there any forcefulness. It had the mood of an old farmer crossing the river, and the old farmer was one that did not know how to swim. Learn from me. All right. Follow my demonstration. This way. Your wrist has to be straight. Your lower body has to be stable. No swaying. This way. Will this do? Aya, yeah, what do you mean will this do? Are you practicing aerobics? After a long period of back and forth, the martial arts director could no longer endure it. He got another supporting actor. It was easy to tell that this person had probably practiced martial arts in the past. The martial arts director let the actor demonstrate to Zhong Yi as well as attempt a fighting scene. However, Zhong Yi, who was a complete rookie, was unable to match the actor. Either his lines did not match or his martial arts motions were lacking. The actor was feeling quite vexed in the end. The acting elsewhere had finished filming. Quite a few people had noticed the commotion here. Many people were amused by John Yi's clumsy handed swordplay. Ha ha! What is this? We can film this. Are we even filming a wuxia movie? His actions are quite strong. I couldn't tell that he had so much strength. It looks like his kicks are quite forceful too, but it's just not pretty. It's too ugly. So what if he's famous in Beijing? He's not cut out for acting. Don't spout irresponsible words. Do you think Teacher Zhong is like the bunch of you who are veterans in this circle? Teacher Zhong is a learned man. To think you ridicule him? I'm telling you. Even if our entire filming crew's literary ability is combined together, we are still inferior to Teacher Zhong. Every industry has its specialists. 
we aren't mocking him, but we are after all in acting, and not competing in literature. With the filming done, they could switch locations. So the moment there was a break, more people gathered around. Some were here to join in the fun, while others were well-meaning and tried to give some advice. The actress who had taken a picture with Zhong Yi said, should we try changing a few actions? The ones before are indeed too difficult. Even professional martial arts actors would have difficulties doing them. The martial arts director sighed, it's already been decided. If we are changing it, we need to redo the choreography. There's no time left. The director has said that we are wrapping up in two days, so where do we have the time? Yao Jinsai said, when is Zhong Yi's part? The assistant director also looked over, it will be tonight. We will be driving to a new location. It's a monastery. Tonight? Then he wouldn't be able to make it in time even if he practices for a few days. Yao Jinsai began to worry for Zhong Yi. The person who was most angry was Zhong Yi himself. When had this fellow ever been so embarrassed? So many people were watching him? They were pointing at him? His face was slightly red. However, he did not believe his actions were in any way not up to mark. In terms of swordplay and kicking, he had done it properly, but these people did not agree to it. They believed Zhong Yi was not up to standard. Why? It was because this was filming for a movie. It was all about the effects and the beauty of fighting. It cared about style. The martial arts director and the other actors who practiced martial arts since they were young definitely had some foundation, but it was at most just a bit. Don't look at their muscles, if they really began fighting, Zhong Yi believed he could beat all them himself without breaking a sweat. And this was if he was unable to use the Taiji fist. This wasn't an exaggeration. What did Zhong Yi know? Taekwondo and Taiji fist. One was a foreign fighting style. Another was a traditional Chinese martial art. Be it the former or latter, these kung fu were ultimately used to suppress one's enemy. Each punch and kick was the real deal and not just a pretty act. It was no joke. But what did they care about when filming a martial arts film? It was the coolness and stylishness. Every movement had to be be wide and open. If they could do it, they would somersault in the air dozens of times before sending a kick towards their enemy. This was what they felt was awesome. But from John Yi's point of view, that was being a retard. If you were to do all this cool stuff while somersaulting in midair, an enemy would have sent you flying with a kick. There were too many flaws. However, this was the difference between industries. John Yi did not look down on others because he knew some kung fu. He knew that in other people's territory and domain, he had to listen to them. This martial arts director was a professional. This was not a problem of knowing kung fu. If a master who had practiced in Chinese martial arts came to direct, it would be unknown what the outcome of the movie would be. The actions would probably be unsightly. Zhong Yi still maintained a heart of humility. He practiced and learned from the martial arts director. He tried to adapt as much as possible to this martial arts act that seemed retarded to him. Chapter 193, Fighting with Monks In the Outskirts The setting sun was nearing the western horizon. The film crew traveled long distance by car before they finally stopped at the foot of a mountain. About 30 people disembarked from a coach bus and three trucks that were filled with props. There was no official written name for this mountain. The locals only called it Little Qingshan as there was a Qingshan monastery on the top of the mountain. Beijing's landscape was definitely incomparable to locations that had beautiful natural landscapes in the south. However, Little Qingshan was an exception. The scenery was pleasant and the monastery was very popular. Many people would come here annually to burn incense and worship. Of course, there were even more filming crews like them who came to film. This was no ordinary place. Little Qingshan was very famous. Qingshan Monastery was also very famous. If one wanted to ask which was the highest mountain here, everyone would definitely point in one direction. Well, the Xiangshan Mountain was a few kilometers away. If one asked which was the most popular monastery around here, the locals would definitely point in one direction. Well, the Xiangshan Zhao Monastery was a few kilometers away. If you asked what had the little Qingshan had to do with Xiangshan, 
or ask what Qingshan Monastery had to do with the Zhao Monastery. Well, actually these places have no relation at all. Let's change topics. The main lead did not come. He had no scenes to film today so he had gone back to rest. Director Jiang walked in front and spoke to a few important supporting actors about the scene. The assistant director was in charge of the prop placement. Stage management was the busiest in the filming crew. Not only did they need to busily prepare items, they had to pick up people, collect food boxes and take on the role of drivers. For such a change of filming locations that was not that far away, they still had to transport the items. Heaps of equipment were unloaded by a few stage management crew and employees. Then they transported it up the mountain. Ignoring the swords, sabers, and poles, even the few cameras were not easily transported. The stairs went up high. It looked like a hundred meters and it extended upwards in a winding fashion. Little Zhong, hurry, give your old bro a hand. After about a dozen steps, Yao Jintsai was already panting. His large belly was trembling and it looked like he was having a hard time. Zhong Yi supported him, your physical fitness is lacking. Yao Jiantsai bragged, back in the day, your old bro was a representative for the school's physical education classes. I'm not in a good state today. It has been a day of filming, if not, just climbing a few hundred meters would be like child's play. After a few pants, he said, don't you say me. Just from the few martial arts move you did, you aren't any better than me. Zhong Yi smiled without saying a word. Neither did he explain. Halfway up the mountain, director Jiang waved his hand and shouted. Stop. Let's set up the cameras here. Props too. Everyone began to busy themselves. There was a scene along the mountainside. Clearly, they were prepared to film here. This scene was precisely where Zhong Yi's role of young hero Chen would appear. The assistant director asked worriedly, Teacher Zhong, will you manage? How could Zhong Yi say no as he firmly said, I've no problems. We can begin filming any time. He had not taken off his costume. He got a sword from the props and was prepared to act. The martial arts director was standing by the side, what do you mean you have no problems? Just that move of yours isn't up to standard. Hi, you should practice before the cameras begin rolling. When the cameras begin rolling, wasting a scene is wasting money. If the director is unhappy, he will definitely swap you out. He was cold on the outside, but warm on the inside. Although he kept saying how Zhong Yi was lacking, he was still sparing no effort to help Zhong Yi do it well. Zhong Yi began practicing. Teacher Zhong, all the best. Right, practice more is all you need. It's not difficult. A few people from Beijing, who knew Zhong Yi, cheered him on. In their hearts, Zhong Yi was a very mighty figure. In the literary field, he was an invincible person with no rivals in Beijing. Unfortunately, he was banned by the television stations, so he was unable to showcase his prowess. In the end, he had to film a movie, and it was a martial arts one. In their opinion, this was clearly something Zhong Yi was lacking in. Although they could see that Zhong Yi was slowly progressing, his actions were still not beautiful. A few knew that this was hard on teacher Zhong. He was a literary scholar who did literature. It was a bit too much for him to brandish swords and swing staffs. However, there were people in the filming crew who looked down on Zhong Yi. Don't bite off more than you chew. We will definitely be wasting some film later. Sigh. Isn't this causing a problem? We are all waiting to knock off after work. If he delays it, who knows what time the filming will end today. Forget it. Refrain from saying so much. It's not easy. A short while later, a few machinery were ready after a few adjustments. Director Jiang sat beside machine number one, all right, let's begin. The villain character that was acting with Zhong Yi came over. He was carrying a sword and stood at his designated position. Zhong Yi took a deep breath and walked over too. He stood at the spot the martial arts director indicated to him. Everything was ready. With a command from director Jiang, the cameras began rolling. Young hero Chen? The villain looked to be on guard. Zhong Yi smiled and said his lines, my surname is Chen, but I don't deserve the title young hero. After a few words were exchanged, the two began fighting. 
Zhong Yi's role was that of a helper of the main lead. The fighting scene was directly recorded. There should have been some scenes of young hero Chen before this, but it was likely to be filmed in the future. Films were seldom recorded according to the plot's order. There was close combat. Saber beams and sword shadows. This scene originally would have Zhong Yi take his enemy's life within 10 moves. At the second move, Zhong Yi followed the established movement and blocked with his sword. Then he kicked out according to the choreography created by the martial arts director. However, this kick of his was too accurate. There was no other way about it as Zhong Yi knew Kung Fu. The skills he obtained from the books were too entrenched, so it was not that easy to deviate from it. His kick had aimed for the villain's vital spot. This was a reflexive movement of Zhong Yi, and he knew things would be bad if he really made the kick. Hence, he quickly diverted it, and reduced his strength. But with the villain slashing the sword over, he slashed onto Zhong Yi's shoulder. Cut! Director Jiang said angrily. The assistant director also said, why didn't you follow the choreography? The villain smacked his lips, Teacher Zhong, your kick should have been lower, then will you be at an advantage with a lowered stance? How can you be slashed by me? Zhong Yi was thinking that if he had not lessened his strength, you would have been sent flying by this bro's kick. How would you even slash me? That was nonsense. However, he did not say a word. As this was not a real fight and just filming a movie, it was indeed true that Zhong Yi was in the wrong. Following that, the cameras began rolling again. Once. Twice. Thrice. Zhong Yi followed the choreography this time. However, he kept feeling that the actions were too weird, nor could there be any strength in them. His limbs were all soft. He was unsatisfied with it. Naturally, Director Jiang would not agree to these takes. What are you doing? Director Jiang's temper was quite bad. In an annoyed manner, he said, do you even know how to fight? You can't even do this tiny bit of actions. Is this very difficult? F asterisk asterisk K. And you are actually yelling at me? Two knife-wielding burglars who were fighting me with their lives had been taken down by me. I can't fight? Zhong Yi stared at him. Those who knew him knew that this fellow's temper was much worse than director Jiang's. He refused to submit to anyone. The assistant director smoothed things over, teacher Zhong is an intellectual. He will definitely be slightly lacking in fighting scenes. Having recalled that this person was recommended by Zhong Yuanqi, director Jiang sighed, let's do another take. However, many of the crew had their objections. Zhong Yi was too useless in their eyes. There were still several scenes later on. They still needed to go up the mountain. How long would this filming take? At this moment, five people came down the mountain. Who are you? Who allowed you to gather here? The monastery is a serene place. Please leave immediately. It was a few bald monks. They were dressed in robes and held poles in their hand. They did not look welcoming. They had already set up the lighting and it was easy to tell at a glance. The assistant director was stunned, little masters, we had informed your abbot a month ago that we would be filming this month. Our sponsorship fees and related contracts have been drawn up. You just need to ask your abbot. Everyone no longer had time to show disdain at Zhong Yi's uselessness. Instead, they looked at the few monks. A monk looked cold as he clenched his pole tightly, half a month ago, our abbot was changed. Now, unauthorized people are prohibited from entry. Zhong Yi felt speechless hearing this. The abbot had changed. When did monasteries engage in competition for higher positions? The assistant director said with a frown, but we have already decided on it. This scene is very important. We can't not have this scene. We will just film for a day and will be gone tomorrow. The young monk said fiercely, not even an hour. Leave immediately. A few young monks surrounded them and blocked the path uphill. Yao Jinsai said, where is your abbot? Please call him here. We will discuss it with him. The abbot is meditating. It's inconvenient for him to receive others. The young monk seemed impenetrable. His expression was also arrogant. He looked down on them, I'm giving you ten seconds. Leave immediately. Ten seconds? 
it wasn't even enough to move their equipment. Director Jiang was also annoyed, bring us to your abbot. The young monk stared at him, didn't you hear what I said? The abbot is meditating. There is still six seconds remaining. Are you leaving? We can help you leave. Monks were so fierce. What sort of monks were these? The filming crew was extremely annoyed. How can you be so fierce? So what if we don't leave? What would you do? Will you use your poles to beat us? Having gone to so many monasteries, I have never seen such unreasonable monks. Come. Try and hit me. I want to see how you are helping us leave. Ten seconds were up. The young monk did not say an additional word and slammed down with his pole. With a crashing sound, a bulb was shattered. Even the lighting frame crashed down and rolled down the mountain. It nearly even swept Zhong Yi off his feet, who had not provoked anyone. Zhong Yi's gaze turned cold. The other filming crew members were also outraged, what are you doing? Another older monk in his twenties also brandished his pole and was about to smash the camera. At this moment, the martial arts director stood forward. With a sword from the props, he charged. Ding! He had clashed with the pole, but before he could make his next move, the young monk had flicked his pole and hit the martial arts director's stomach, sending him flying. Ah! The martial arts director rolled down the stairs. An actor and two stage management crew happened to be just below. They hurriedly caught him, stabilizing him. If he carried on rolling down, even if he did not die, he would be left half dead. There were still tens of meters of stairs. Chapter 194, Zhong Yi's Taiji Fist 1 vs 4 On Little Qingshan The filming crew began cursing. You dare hit someone? You smashed our things? Have you monks gone crazy? Call the police. Isn't this a society that is ruled by law? You're from the monastery, we respected you. We've already discussed it with you all earlier, but now you just want to take back your word like this. Even hitting our people? This is too unreasonable. All of you, what kind of people are you? And you call yourselves monks. Aren't monks supposed to be compassionate? Ah? What if our people fell off just now? He would have fallen to his death. You guys tried to push him to his death? With the commotion, many people had now gathered around. The few young monks looked at them without batting an eyelid, we already told you to leave immediately. You guys did not listen. So don't blame us for for not being welcoming. Another young monk said, we will say it once more. Are you leaving? Ah, their faces were full of malice. A stuntman stepped forward, so what if we don't leave? Before he could even finish the sentence, another young monk had already attacked. With a wave of his pole, it hit the stuntman on his face. P.U. The stuntman flew sideways horizontally. That showed how much strength was put into that hit. Little Zhao. Holy fuck. This gang of bald donkeys. That hit showed everyone the group of monks were not in the mood for discussion. They did not bother about what had been discussed, nor did they have eyes for the law. If they wanted to beat you, they will beat you. It also made them understand that even though their group numbered around 30 people, they were totally outmatched by the group of monks. Initially, they felt that since most of them had some training before and with so many years of filming martial arts movies, they'd be able to deal with these few monks. But the facts had proven that their martial arts were all just fancy moves. The martial arts director could not even take two hits before being blown away. Those stuntmen with over 10 years of experience like Little Zhao were not even able to strike. Though the monks were a little underhanded by striking first without warning, even in a fair duel, the monks were still one better than the other. It was different from this bunch of actors with their fancy moves. The monks had real weapons on hand and had trained from young in the monastery. Fancy moves versus real skills. With just an exchange of blows, the outcome had been decided. Director Jiang did not bother about the equipment. Instead, he ran over to the fallen stuntman and asked, Little Zhao, how are you? Are you all right? Little Zhao bitterly spat out the blood in his mouth, I'm fine. The assistant director said in a panic, Director Jiang, a wise man does not fight when the odds are against him, let's. 
Director Jiang clenched his teeth and hesitated a moment. Just as he was about to command everyone to head down the mountain, the monks did not even wait and tried to strike another camera with a pole. The girl who had asked for a photo with Zhong Yi was standing nearby. She suddenly threw herself in front of the camera, if you want to hit, you have to hit me first. Little Yang. Sister Yang. Little Yang, come back here. Are you or the machine more important? Stop. You even want to hit a girl? Are you even human? The actress showed no fear and stared at the group of monks. The monk who was striking with the pole hesitated but said, a monk does not differentiate between man and woman. After saying that, his face turned malicious and he struck the pole down on the actress. No. Sister Yang. Are you all f asterisk asterisk king insane? The film crew were all in shock as they cursed. They could pass on the stuntman Little Zhao, or even the martial arts director, they were trained with good builds and were men. But the actress was a fragile female comrade. If the pole struck her, she might even become paralyzed. Little Yang's face turned green. But she stood her ground and did not step back. She was betting her life on this. The long pole whistled through the air. Ten centimeters. Five centimeters. Just as the pole was about to hit Little Yang's shoulder, as though the film crew were all shouting with rage, a figure appeared behind Little Yang's back. It was Zhong Yi. Everyone was stunned. Teacher Zhong? What are you doing over there? You don't even know the basic moves for the scene, those monks are. At this moment, Zhong Yi made a move that left everyone dumbfounded. Zhong Yi had tried numerous times earlier during the duel with the villain during filming to use his Taiji fist to let the filming effect be expressed more beautifully. But despite trying over and over, he could not achieve the desired effect. He had wanted to achieve those moves like in the movies, but he just couldn't do it. But right now, upon seeing so many of the equipment being smashed and the actress, who had wanted a photo with him, facing a beating, Zhong Yi's emotions were exploding. With a move of his arms and feet, he now knew that he could use Taiji. His hands had precisely grabbed hold of the pole as it came down, and with a twist of his wrist, the pole had deviated from its trajectory and slid past Little Yang's shoulder and landed with a loud slam on the ground. The young monk was stunned. Before he could come back to his senses, Zhong Yi's wrist followed up with a movement, seemingly without much effort, as he borrowed the momentum he obtained when the pole rebound forcefully, hitting the chin of the monk with a loud bang. The young monk's mouth was full of blood. His lower jaw had slammed into his upper jaw as four to five bloody teeth flew out from his mouth. P.U. The young monk was beaten into a daze. Zhong Yi did not let him off and used a single hand to lift and twist him around before winding up behind the young monk. Then, he landed a heavy shot to the back of the young monk's neck. The young monk crumbled to the ground. Having his upper body being hit by Zhong Yi caused him to land on his head on a step. Without a sound, he had passed out. Wu Yang. Brother Wu Yang. The few young monks all shouted that person's name in horror. Little Yang was stunned. She looked at Zhong Yi with a dazed face and then looked at the young monk with a bloody mouth who was now lying dead on the ground. This. This. Are you looking for death? The monk who had earlier ambushed the stuntman with an attack rushed at Zhong Yi within a few steps. The other monks also rushed forward with killing intent, their eyes full of hatred. Looking for death? Is this what a monk should utter? When you wanted to kill us, we deserved it. But when we get one of your guys, then I have to die. Zhong Yi's face turned cold. He had no intention of stepping back. Instead, he took a few large strides and headed forward, to welcome them face on. This time, he was really offended. If he had depended on those few Taekwondo skills experience books, Zhong Yi felt that it would be a chore to face even just one of them. This bunch of monks knew Kung Fu that was neither deep nor at a superficial level. However, their punches and kicks were all real so Zhong Yi felt that his Taekwondo would not hold up. But now with the eruption of his Taiji fist and the experience of fighting the monk earlier, Zhong Yi worries had all faded. One of them reached him first. A shadow of the pole came after. Zhong Yi used the same move, his hand grabbed hold of the pole but did not stop it. He again borrowed the momentum and with a flick of his wrists turned it downwards. 
that monk did not realize what had happened. He only felt his brute strength being negated fully at that moment, and the pole that was no longer in his control came crashing onto the ground. He had earlier seen the other monk being beaten unconscious but could not put his head around it. He did not understand why his junior was not a match for this person in front of him. At this moment, he could finally see it, but it was already too late. Zhong Yi turned his palm and hit him on the chin. That monk had followed in the previous victim's footsteps. He spat out blood and several of his teeth. Zhong Yi struck him on the back of his neck with his hand and this second monk too had now been knocked unconscious. The remaining two monks had now gone pale upon seeing this. They looked at each other and said, let's attack together. The shadow of the poles came down together to attack. Zhong Yi used the same move that allowed him greatness. With one hand, he held the pole on the left side. With his other hand, he held the pole on his right. And then seeing the monk on his left staggering, their movements messier than the two monks from earlier, he changed the direction and momentum of the pole's movement. The monk tried to increase his attacking strength, but without any control, the pole flew out from his hands. With that, his legs wobbled and he lost his balance. This allowed Zhong Yi to give a kick, a taekwondo kick to his face. It was not a kick as graceful as Taiji, but its strength was vicious. That monk collapsed on his back and groaned as he lay on the ground. Then he fainted. Following that, the monk on his right moved in. He thought he was smart and did not attack with the pole swinging down. He deviated from the previous few attacks and swung the pole at Zhong Yi sideways at his waist. But Zhong Yi managed to grab hold of the pole. With a step aside and a flick of his waist, the pole was now at Zhong Yi's waist with hardly any force. The attack had been nullified by Zhong Yi's unknown moves and he had even allowed Zhong Yi to move closer to him now. With the back of his palm, Zhong Yi hit him on the lower jaw and followed up with another to his back. Smash! Ah! That person was also knocked unconscious. In a space of just ten seconds and several simple moves, four of the five monks were now lying unconscious on the floor. Seeing this, the last monk did not rush forward no matter how foolish he was. He knew that they had met a master today. A master of the masters. He looked at his fellow disciples and turned to run back up towards the mountain. Senior brother. Master. This is not good. The young monk shouted until his lungs almost burst. Zhong Yi looked at the actress, are you all right? Ah, no, no matter. Little Yang was stuttering in her shock. How are the others? Zhong Yi asked the martial arts director, are there any internal injuries? But all of them didn't say a word. They were in fact looking at Zhong Yi with shocked faces, as if they had witnessed an alien. Yao Jintsai was dumbfounded. Director Jiang was in a daze. The assistant director and other members of the film crew were all staring at him. Too ferocious. This was too fucking ferocious. Who said that teacher Zhong Yi was a learned man? Who said that teacher Zhong was a weakling? Weakling your sister. The martial arts director and the stuntman, Little Zhao were all no match for those people. But look at what happened. That bunch of monks were no match for you. Each one unconscious with a hit, like they were dancing. Holy sure asterisk T. What kind of ferocious battle points do you even have? Chapter 195, Zhong Yi discusses Buddhist verses with monks. Little Zhong, you are awesome. A fierce man. Yao Jintsai said with a loud laugh. He did not seem composed like how an old man in his forties or fifties should be. He wrapped his arm around Zhong Yi's shoulders, those few moves of yours are coquettish. The actress, who had been saved, came around and thanked him, Teacher Zhong, thank you. Zhong Yi waved his hands and also removed old Yao's arm from his shoulder. The martial arts director had gotten around. He was not seriously injured, but the expression he used while looking at Zhong Yi was only that of shock, little Zhong, teacher, you. I thought you don't know Kung Fu. Aren't you not able to do a few simple martial arts movements and even after practice, you still could not do it up to standard? How did you? Zhong Yi said in a speechless manner, martial arts movements. Those things were called bullsh asterisk T martial arts movements. The villain actor who had acted opposite him also said, that's right. If you are so powerful, why couldn't you do those simple actions? 
Could you been acting and using me for your amusement? Only then did he realize that the person he had looked down upon and had wasted a lot of film footage was a hidden master. However, why couldn't he tell despite sparring with him previously? Zhong Yi did not explain. The stuntman, who had been injured, had already stood up. Although Zhong Yi did not say a word, he could tell. Can't you tell? Teacher Zhong knows real kung fu. Our martial arts we use for filming movies is not called martial arts at all. It's just showy. What teacher Zhong was using was true Chinese martial arts. We let a teacher, who has already imbued Chinese martial arts into his bones and body, to do our showy martial arts. It would be a wonder if he could do it well. True Chinese martial arts focuses on training one's body before practicing the art of restraining an enemy. It's not the same as ours which is just to show the audience. His master had also practiced in Chinese martial arts. He only began learning from his master after the age of 18, and had already missed the prime age for practicing martial arts. No matter what he practiced was just the tip of the iceberg. Hence, he could only become a stuntman. Although he could not traverse down the path of Chinese martial arts, he still knew quite a bit, so he could tell at a glance. Chinese martial arts. Teacher Zhong really knows Kung Fu? And it's true Kung Fu? This is the first time seeing it. It's so cool. Teacher Zhong, teach me tomorrow. Everyone gave him the thumbs up. After a daze, the martial arts director was no longer surprised. He had seen many Chinese martial arts experts before. For example, many action stars and martial arts director in the industry or even stuntmen had practiced Chinese martial arts. Some of them had great attainment. However, he never expected a weak, soft and non-muscular teacher Zhong was a Chinese martial arts practitioner. And it could be seen that he was not a beginner. He destroyed each person upon each encounter with one punch each. He was definitely an expert who had trained for years. He was a frog in a well. He was really a frog in a well. The martial arts director and many of the people who had previously grumbled about Zhong Yi's inability to do the actions turned red from embarrassment. They realized that it was not because Zhong Yi was unable to do well, but it was because they were making fools out of themselves. If one wanted to be precise, teacher Zhong Yi was the person who really knew martial arts. The martial arts director cupped his fists, sorry about before. Zhong Yi shook his hands, what's there to be sorry about? The assistant director said with lingering fear, it's all thanks to little Zhong or we would suffer heavy losses. Xiaoyan was nearly beaten. That bunch of bald donkeys. When the other people from the filming crew heard this, they also began cursing. Pooey. What sort of monks are they? We can't just let this go. Yao Jintsai was also very angry. He went forward and kicked a monk who had fainted from Zhong Yi's beating. However, that kick made him move. It was as if he was regaining consciousness. Yao Jintsai hurriedly retreated in fear and stood behind Zhong Yi. He then began cursing the monk. Director Jiang. Director Jiang, what do we do? Director Jiang looked at those who had fainted and asked Zhong Yi, how are they? There's no danger, right? Zhong Yi said lightly, there's no danger. Just a few teeth lost or a dislocated jaw. As for other things, they are just superficial wounds. I didn't injure them too badly. For the first time, Director Jiang looked at him with appreciation, then what do you think we should do now? Go up the mountain. Zhong Yi said matter-of-factly, let's get them to answer for their actions. They can't just beat our people up for nothing. They have to pay for our equipment. Director Jiang. The assistant director wiped his sweat and said, they have already called for reinforcements. Who knows how many monks they have. What if there are more than ten, we? Zhong Yi said coldly, if one comes, I'll beat one up. If ten comes, I'll beat ten up. The martial arts director gave his kudos, nice. Count me in. Me too. Let's fight it out with them up the mountain. An actor said excitedly. After seeing Zhong Yi's Kung Fu, these people immediately felt emboldened. They were no longer afraid of anything. With a masterful expert with them, who was afraid of who? Of course, there were only a few who felt their blood surging. A large number of them were at a loss whether to laugh or cry. 
those who knew of Zhong Yi's past deeds recalled of this person's a asterisk shoal temper. Back then, they did not actually believe it and waved them off as rumors. After all, how much of an a asterisk shoal could a broadcasting host who dealt with literature be? However from what they saw today, it was indeed true. The rumors were not fake. This guy was a fearless person. What sort of place was a monastery? That was a place protected by numerous civilians. From the looks of it, you were going to thrash their monastery? Don't be rash. Calm down. Don't fight when you are up the mountain. Speak nicely first. Right, those monks had been beaten by us, and it was not that trivial. We have obtained our revenge. I think we should report to the police and go down the mountain first. Everyone were in disagreement. There was no outcome. But in a blink of an eye, Zhong Yi had already walked up the staircase. Zhong Yi didn't care if they were going up. He could not take it lying down. He. Teacher Zhong. Little Zhong, what are you doing? The moment Zhong Yi went up the mountain, the martial arts director, a few stuntmen and two actors followed. Yao Jinsai did not hide away and also rolled up his sleeves and followed behind while swearing. Director Jiang was already appeased. They had only beaten two people up, and the injuries were slight. The lighting equipment they smashed was not that expensive either. However, they had taken down four monks. Up to now, none of them had waken up. As the overall director, he still cared about the bigger picture. Although he felt hatred, he still got a few people to carry the monks up the mountain. He did not ignore and leave the monks behind. At the top of the mountain, what was supposed to be a dark monastery was lit up. They were not using flaming torches or similar stuff. Monasteries had lamps. Every one of them used electricity these days. The moment the filming crew arrived, they encountered a group of about seven to eight monks. There weren't many of them, but they were fully armed. Some of them held poles, while one of them looked like the monastery's cook. It looked like he came out with a large ladle. They were all furious and stared deadly at Zhong Yi, however, none of them dared to take the step forward. The junior brother that came back had already informed them of the situation. From the description, they could not tell what kung fu the other party used. They could only be certain that it was a form of Chinese martial arts. They also guessed that according to the description, the lot of them probably was not the person's match. Hence, although they stood there shouting, none of them dared to be the first to rush forward. Where are my junior brothers? You dare to hit monks? This is pushing it too far. Where's the abbot? Quickly get the abbot here. A few of the filming crew members had brought the monks up the mountain. After receiving a nod from director Jiang when they glanced at him, they brought the monks over. One of the monks had already woken up, so he walked over himself. Junior brother. Senior brother. What happened to you? The bunch of monks hurried over to help and pinched their philtrums. Not a while later, the monks, who had been beaten, regained consciousness. They barely stood up. They were not seriously injured, but their words sounded odd like there was air leakage. Their teeth had dropped off. A mitba. Suddenly, an old monk walked out of the courtyard. He first looked at his disciples' wounds before he faced the filming crew. Abbot. They beat us up. A young monk who had regained consciousness complained despite being the first at fault. Shut up. The abbot roared, did you make the move first? The monks were temporarily rendered speechless. The other monks also lowered their heads and did not speak. The abbot said with a sad heart, monks should be benevolent. By hurting others, this outcome is a result of your own actions. Others are not to blame. Yao Jinsai grunted, looks like you have someone reasonable here. Then this would be easier to negotiate. Director Jiang said with some resentment, Abbot, our film crew had previously contacted the previous Abbot and had agreed to this filming. Now with you going back on your words and even beating up our people and smashing our equipment, I want to ask what's the meaning of this? Thankfully we have an expert in our crew, or who knows if someone would be killed by the bunch of you today. The abbot looked very calm and spoke calmly, we do not welcome filming crew in the future. Director Jiang said, it's fine if you don't welcome us, but why didn't you say so earlier? 
Why was there a need to beat people up? I was meditating. I did not know anything that was happening outside. If I knew, I wouldn't have allowed them to do so. The abbot placed his palms together and said, Amitba, my few disciples have been taught a lesson by you, so almsgiver, please leave. I won't see you out. He was pushing the responsibility. He was using the fact that he was unaware as an answer. And he was not seeing them out. He was so impolite. They had previously thought they had met a reasonable person, but who knew he was also a recalcitrant monk? Zhong Yi walked up. This movement of his caused a few of the young monks to step back in horror. The abbot understood this at a glance. This person was definitely the Chinese martial arts expert who had beaten his disciples. This almsgiver, what's the matter? He was fearless. It was unknown if he had practiced kung fu before. Zhong Yi looked at him and said, if this matter is not cleared up, we will not leave. If there's any matter, do it another day. I haven't finished my seated meditation. The abbot could not care any less about him as he turned around, bringing his disciples away. Meditation? You are still meditating at this moment? Zhong Yi was angered and as he saw the abbot's distancing back figure, he immediately threw out a famous Buddhist verse from Master Huaining, in a face-smacking way, when living, sit, don't lie. When dead, lie down, don't sit. How can a set of stinking bones, be used for training? The abbot was stunned as he suddenly turned his head backwards. The young monks were also stunned as they looked with their mouths agape at John Yi. Chapter 196, John Yi's one gather after another. Zen verse? This person even knew Zen verses? When living, sit, don't lie. When dead, lie down, don't sit. How can a set of stinking bones, be used for training? Those who did not know could not understand at all, but those who really knew could tell the profoundness of the Zen verse. Even Buddhist masters might not be able to freely say such verses. John Yi's Zen phrase meant, a pile of stinking bones will rot, but if it stubbornly insisted on doing the actions of meditation without understanding the verses, then they were demonstrating, when living, sit, don't lie. When dead, lie down, don't sit. By the time you had such thoughts, your senses and character would only be fake inside out. How was there any merit established? How was one to gain enlightenment? Or if it was put simply, Zhong Yi was telling them, are you learning to meditate or learning to be a seated Buddha? If you were meditating, then that was not something you could do just sitting there. If they were learning to be a seated Buddha, Buddha was not a fixed state, so how was one to accomplish it by sitting? To gain Buddhist enlightenment from meditation was not a feasible route. In Buddhism, there were Gatha and Zen verses. They were given such names and not called poems. But to John Yi, they were no different from poems. You! A young monk said in disbelief. Not only him, even the abbot could not accept that such a profound Zen verse came from the mouth of a martial monger, who had beaten his four disciples. The abbot looked into Zhong Yi's eyes, almsgiver, you know Zen verses? Many people in the filming crew did not understand Zhong Yi's gatha, but from the monks' faces of shock, they knew Zhong Yi had said something awesome. Yao Jintsai laughed. The deputy director laughed. Many people in the filming crew were also laughing. They knew that for acting, Zhong Yi was a complete layman. He was inferior to even a typical rookie or they would not have wasted so much of the film footage without succeeding in filming his motions. However, when it came to poems and literature, this teacher Zhong Yi was an expert amongst experts. All the members of the filming crew combined together could not even amount to a finger of Zhong Yi. It could be said that this was his true trade. Everyone laughed knowing that these monks had encountered a hard problem. When some people live, they are already dead. When some people die, they are still alive. Some of them knew that Zhong Yi had previously used a short poem like this. This short line made it evident that Zhong Yi's literary skill was not to be underestimated. Zhong Yi smiled. I can't say I know. You don't have to be humble. Just that gather you said might not even be produced by an esteemed monk who has meditated for decades. Ha ha. Since I happen to meet you, let us exchange our knowledge on verses. His disciples had been beaten, so the abbot probably was suppressing his anger. Compete in martial arts. Since he couldn't beat others, he changed to competing through words. 
Xiaoyong could not help but laugh. Compare your literary attainment with teacher Zhong. This was shooting themselves in the foot, and immediately cheered on Zhong Yi, teacher Zhong, compete with him. Right. Attack. Let them broaden their horizons. Ha ha, there are still people these days that want to compete with Zhong Yi in literature. A, this is Zen studies, right? Does teacher Zhong know? Isn't Zen studies also a form of literature? It's not much different. Everyone started to shout, urging Zhong Yi to have a literary battle with the monk. Many of them were confident of Zhong Yi. Only a small number of them did not know Zhong Yi well, and were not as optimistic. An old monk sneered, to have an exchange in verses with the abbot. Another monk said, if your senses are dirty, what verses are there to talk about? A layman dares to have an exchange in verses with our abbot? He doesn't know his strength. A young monk scoffed. Yes, he said that although he was previously shocked by John Yi's verse. This bunch of monks did not watch television, so they did not know anything about John Yi. It was obvious that neither side was willing to step down. They could not fight, nor could they afford to fight, but they had to decide who was better. They had to vent this anger. John Yi said nonchalantly, All right, please go ahead. Taking advantage of the moment, John Yi did a few actions with his hands and bought a memory search capsule from the Game Rings merchant shop. After eating it, he very quickly remembered the Gatha and Zen verses from his world. These text based things were recalled quickly. With a blink of an eye, John Yi was ready. People fought for their anger, while Buddha fought for incense. The past two days of accumulation had slightly increased his reputation, so it was still enough to buy a memory search capsule. It was not for anything but to act almighty. He could see that a female stage management crew member had begun recording with a cell phone a long while ago. Look at how smart she was. Zhang Yi wanted to give her a like. She had such great foresight. What were the conditions to reach the highest realm of acting almighty? Firstly, one needed an inhuman opponent. Secondly, one needed a bunch of fussing audience. Thirdly, one needed recording equipment, so as to broadcast Zhong Yi's literary excellence to its fullest extent. It couldn't be privately admired. These three conditions had been fulfilled. The abbot said softly, the gatha said by almsgiver previously meant that meditating was useless. On this point, I do not agree. I am not attempting to gain enlightenment from simply meditating. Meditating is just a method and a way of training one's mind. Since you are a martial arts practitioner, you should know the importance of methods in martial studies. I'm dedicated to Buddhism, while you are dedicated to martial arts. They all have the same principles. Didn't you use methods while being a bully to beat my disciples? At this moment, when the highest authority, Director Jiang, heard this, the anger he had suppressed flared up once again. He was so angry that he cried out. What unreasonable words! Teacher Zhong was being a bully? Beat your disciples? Why didn't you mention that your disciples were the first to attack? This old bald donkey sure can beat about the bush. The film crew began to shout in unison. They were very unhappy with the abbot's words. Zhong Yi laughed and looked at him, was I the one who injured your disciples? If it wasn't you, then who was it? The abbot answered. It seemed like he was relying back on Zen studies to come back at Zhong Yi. In this field, the abbot was a specialized major. However, Zhong Yi did not give him a chance. He immediately took a Buddhist story from his world. He then pointed at a flag at the corner of the monastery. The flag was flapping in the wind, with the wind blowing, the flag flaps. Do you say the wind is moving or the flag is moving? A young monk was the first to answer, of course the wind is moving. Zhong Yi shook his head. An old monk said, the flag is moving? Zhong Yi carried on shaking his head. A monk said, then what is moving? The world is moving? Zhong Yi looked up and said, it's your heart that is moving. This Buddhist story was quite well known in Zhong Yi's world. Things changed because of one's will to change. This was not talking about the physical change in things, but the way things were approached. We would always first subjectively decide if a thing was good or bad. Zhong Yi was using this verse to tell this bunch of people. I was being a bully. 
I beat you up? That was just your own subjective opinion. Director Jiang applauded, well said. The actress, Xiaoyan laughed out loud, Teacher Zhong is awesome. The filming crew was also highly spirited as they clapped and cheered Zhong Yi. The monks did not look good. With that verse said, it showed how petty they were. However, the abbot remained poised. He quietly said, Buddha said, evil words that harm others would descend to hell after death, what more those who beat others. I wonder if almsgiver believes in heaven and hell. As a superstitious person, Zhong Yi answered without thinking, I believe. The abbot said, then where is heaven? And where is hell? Zhong Yi glanced at him, it's in your heart and also everywhere. Oh. In my heart? Why can't I see that? The abbot said peacefully. Zhong Yi chuckled, and immediately scolded him, you old bald donkey. An old monk immediately turned angry. A few younger monks also picked up their sticks, wanting to fight it out with Zhong Yi. Zhong Yi said without any hurry and pointed at them, see, the gates of hell has opened. When the few monks heard it, they immediately understood and quickly put down their sticks. Zhong Yi chuckled once again, look, the gates to heaven has also opened. The monks looked at each other. So this was what it meant with heaven and hell being in the heart. The abbot asked, then what does it mean that heaven and hell is everywhere? Zhong Yi answered him with his world's gather, to see a world in a grain of sand. And a heaven in a wild flower. Hold infinity in the palm of your hand. An eternity in an hour. About ten monks were stunned hearing this. Yao Jiansai slapped his thigh and applauded, what finesse. Too much finesse. Teacher Zhong is so impressive. Ha ha ha. That was said so beautifully. Someone in the filming crew sent his kudos. The abbot was also slightly lost in thought, since almsgiver believes in heaven and knows about hell, then why did you have to do actions that harm others? He kept insisting on this issue. Xiaoyan said angrily, do you have anything else? Yao Jiansai said, you can't beat little Zhong in Zen studies, so you begin clinging on this? Who was the one who harmed others? It was the bunch of you who harmed others first, all right. F asterisk asterisk K. An actor cursed. The abbot ignored the surrounding people and only looked at Zhong Yi, indifferent towards karma, since you believe in hell, aren't you afraid of descending into hell? Zhong Yi was not pulled in by him and did not accept his verse that was filled with hidden tricks. With a laugh, he said heroically, if I don't descend into hell, who will? This gatha could be said to be one of the most famous Buddhist verses in Zhong Yi's world. It could be said to be peerless. The deputy director immediately shouted, awesome. The other members of the filming crew also shouted excitedly, what a good, if I don't descend into hell, who will? However, this sentence did not only have the literal meaning they understood. In fact, they did not understand either, but the abbot understood. Another old monk also understood it. Momentarily, the two of them looked at Zhong Yi with their gazes changed. If I don't descend into hell, who will? These words were not that of anger but a Zen verse that was filled with compassion. By descending into hell, without wishing for an end, experiencing extreme torture, to the point of leading a living death. At this moment, if I didn't enter and save them, who would? The abbot said with his palms flat against each other, Amitba. An old monk behind also said with his palms flat, Amitba. The young monks were still unconvinced. They did not believe that their abbot's Buddhist studies were incomparable to a layman. At this moment, it was Zhong Yi's turn to ask. He pointed at a stone tablet in the yard. There were words inscribed on it. It was a line that made him very interested as well as one that was very familiar. When I came in, I saw this. I wonder from whom did this gather come from? The abbot gave a glance, it was written by me a few days ago. The carving looked new, so it was clear that it had been recently carved. The abbot chanted, the body is a body tree, the mind is a mirror bright, never stop dusting and wiping, lest dust alight. This is my pursuit of the path of Buddha. The filming crew also looked over. They were momentarily awed and felt that the gatha was indeed very good. With his body like a body tree that let people of the past gain enlightenment, with a heart like a dustless and bright mirror, by constantly reflecting on oneself, it would not let dust settle on the mirror to mar one's nature. Well written. 
this was really written by the abbot? The film crew also had a sudden change of attitude towards the abbot. They now understood why the Qingshan Monastery did not welcome filming crews. Them harshly sending people down the mountain and not permitting them entry was because of this gather of the new abbot. They did not want to tarnish their monastery, and was also the meaning of, never stop dusting and wiping, lest dust alight. Someone from the filming crew gave a slight nod. The abbot also looked towards Zhong Yi, waiting for his reaction. Who knew that Zhong Yi did not take it seriously and laughed. What a coincidence that this world also had such a gather. However, the difference was it did not have the second half of the gather from Zhong Yi's world. The abbot said, Armsgiver, why do you laugh? A young monk said angrily, What are you laughing about? That's right. If you have the ability, write one. Another monk was also displeased. Zhong Yi found it both funny and annoying, the reason why you don't let us on the mountain, beat us up, and destroyed our equipment, was all because of this gather? The abbot looked at him, does almsgiver think my gather is inappropriate? It's far from inappropriate. Zhong Yi said impolitely, it's completely misleading. What are you saying? A young monk angrily picked up a pole. However, having just recalled the verse about heaven and hell that Zhong Yi just mentioned, he angrily put down his pole. Of course, he knew a large part of it had to do with him not being able to beat Zhong Yi even with a pole. What do you mean misleading? An old monk asked. Another young monk said exasperatedly, don't speak blindly if you do not know. The filming crew did not know why Zhong Yi despised this gather so much. To them, the gather was very well written. There wasn't a problem to it. However, Zhong Yi said, I have a story here. Listen to it first. In the past, there were two reverend monks in debate. The first monk said, I have a mirror in my heart, that I polish every day, so that it can be used as a reflection, so as to scrutinize myself. However, the second monk said, I have no mirror in my heart, what is there to polish? No mirror? What is there to polish? When everyone present heard this, they were stunned. Some seemed to be confused, but there were some who seemed to immediately understand a thing. Then Zhong Yi said, Today, I'll give you another gather. Saying that, Zhong Yi looked towards each and every one of those monks, the body is a body tree. The mind is a mirror bright? Never stop dusting and wiping? Less dust alight? Zhong Yi's eyes narrowed. He retorted every word of the abbot. Every word was a strike in the monks' hearts. With every line, the expressions on the monks changed once. By origin, there is no body tree. Nor is there a mirror bright. Originally there is not a single thing. All the monks turned silent. Zhong Yi smiled and asked the monks, where does dust alight? Chapter 197, Conferring Words. Zhong Yi finished speaking. There was silence immediately. What was a body tree? The body tree was a large and very old sacred fig tree. The tree grows to a height of 15-25 m and its trunk has a diameter of about 30 to 50 centimeters. It has a large and wide-spreading crown, with a bark that is light gray in color. The simple, long-stalked leaves are heart-shaped and long-tipped. The flowers are tiny and are found inside the small fleshy figs, which ripen to greenish-yellow, then purple. There are three kinds of flowers, male, female and sterile. Of course, those were just filler words. This was an official description of the plant. Cough cough. Right, time to be serious. By origin, there is no body tree. Although the body tree existed in the world, the body tree referred to by Buddhists was not a plant. It was a symbol and memory. The body also represented the great wisdom of Buddhism. What tree was there? What mirror was there? Just as Zhong Yi had described the debate between the two monks, the constant reflection of oneself in the mirror, was just a will, a thought, so how was there a mirror? There was no body tree. Nor was there a mirror. Originally, there is not a single thing, so where does dust alight? Everyone including the abbot and the monks all searched for an answer within themselves. They used the gather from Zhong Yi to question themselves, where does the dust alight? That's right. Where does dust alight? The abbot was convinced as he held his palms together, a mitba. Following that, the ten or so monks behind him also held their palms together, a mitba. 
the film crew's jaw had dropped when they heard the gatha by Zhong Yi. They did not understand Buddhism nor had they learned anything about Zen. Just as they had heard the talk about Zen between the abbot and Zhong Yi earlier, they were only listening for the sake of listening. They knew that Zhong Yi was very good at it, but they did not understand its meanings. But this gatha was different. Not only the monks, even those who were just laymen on Buddhist teachings had heard and understood it clearly. At the beginning, they felt that the abbot's gatha was already very good, but when Zhong Yi's, by origin, there is no body tree, was said, everyone was stunned to the heavens. In that moment, they saw the gulf between the abbot's gatha and Zhong Yi's gatha. Everything does not stand up well with comparisons. When the two gathas were compared, if we say that teacher Zhong Yi was a reverend monk, then the abbot could be thought of as someone who had just entered the monastery or had even not yet become a monk. Ha ha. Nice. Teacher Zhong Yi, you are so cool. What a good there is no body tree. What a nor is there a mirror. That's right. There's nothing at all. How can there be dust? Teacher Zhong's gatha is peerless. Instead, it was the bunch of monks who were enlightened. That gatha was too awesome. Why do I feel like I'm witnessing a scene for the ages? Little Qingshan's Zen Exchange? In a few centuries, when the future generations mention this gatha by Teacher Zhong, will we also be included in that story? Definitely, ha. Huh? We have been touched by the greatness of this and it will be spoken of for a thousand years. Did you record it? It's recorded. I recorded too, Teacher Zhong was too awesome. Debating about Zen with a monk and winning. What was face smacking? This was face smacking. What was pretending to be awesome? This was pretending to be awesome. Yao Jinsai finally smiled. He felt that Zhong Yi was more and more pleasing to the eye now. Old Yao thought that if he had this level of acting awesome like Zhong Yi, what would become of him? The women would be throwing themselves at him. Quite a few people in the film crew knew of teacher Zhong Yi's literary skills. Even though a majority of the crew did not know Zhong Yi before this, they had now found out about his capabilities from the others who knew of him from before. But what just happened made them understand that they had still underestimated his literary upbringing. Initially, they had urged Zhong Yi to have a literary duel with the abbot because they felt that Zhong Yi would not lose since this was his rice bowl. But since the duel was about Zen and Gatha, which belonged to a different school of literature, Gatha was a philosophical study compared to poetry, they had not expected him to win so overwhelmingly. The abbot and the monks were all stunned in silence. They had been dumbfounded by the lecture of teacher John Yi. Especially the last bit about the body tree. Gatha was just a form of language used by monks. It wasn't like a couplet where a second verse would exist. But who would have thought that Zhong Yi could treat it like a couplet and match the second verse to the gatha? Every word was profound. It had refuted the abbot's gatha fully. And it had refuted it so well that no one could say anything. This gatha could not even be commented on, it was that high of a level. Even people who could not understand could see it clearly. The abbot looked deeply at Zhong Yi before regaining a peaceful look. He closed his eyes and muttered something before slowly opening his eyes again, this old monk has been meditating for over thirty years. I've been dedicating myself to Buddha all these years and just a few days ago, I was enlightened and wrote that gatha. I thought that I had stepped closer to Buddha and that my spiritual practice had gone to another level. As he said this, he smiled bitterly, never did I expect that by meeting you, I would realize that I have not even stepped into the doorway of Zen, what a pity, what a pity. Master. Abbot. A few young monks were still worried. The abbot waved his hands and said to Zhong Yi, this almsgiver might be a secular man, but he has great wisdom. He has wisdom that is even greater than us monks. Today, I have been beaten convincingly. If you have the heart to become a practitioner of Buddhism in future, your dharma will definitely be higher than mine by a few hundred times. Hearing this, Zhong Yi immediately waved his hands, please don't say that, I'm leading a good life, I'm not so silly. I will continue to be my secular self, being secular is better. The abbot said with regrets, such a pity, a pity. The abbot had admitted defeat and the monks who had been beaten up earlier had looks of resignation. Who was this person in front of them? He couldn't be beaten in a fight. He couldn't be out-talked with words. Does he even leave a route for retreat? 
Of course, they could not out-talk Zhong Yi. What he had said was a gather by Abbot Hui Neng from his previous world. It was the widely known Platform Sutra. Furthermore, during the verse exchange, Zhong Yi had used his mouth to speak. All right, that's nonsense, but something isn't. That is because Zhong Yi had previously eaten many fruits of charm, voice. This was something that increased his voice's charm. It naturally made his words have an indescribable profoundness. Hence, everyone was shocked. There was reason to it. Victory had been decided. The film crew had won. They had finally vented their anger. With this win, the victors were also more tolerant. Seeing the abbot admit defeat graciously, many people's impression of him became better. They comforted him a little. Abbot, don't compete with Teacher Zhong. Right, Teacher Zhong Yi is a famous literary person in Beijing. Anything he writes becomes a classic. I believe you all don't watch TV. In the past, they only heard rumors. But today, they had witnessed Zhong Yi's composing prowess. Their emotions were still running high because of hearing the gatha. In a moment, the abbot said to the few young monks, go and prepare a few rooms in the backyard and settle down all the almsgivers. The few young monks went to do as instructed without a second word. They were already convinced by Zhong Yi. With just that line of, there was no body tree, he had won the respect of quite a few monks. Do not judge a book by its cover. Zhong Yi's looks might be ordinary or even a little lousy. But to a Buddhist practitioner, the outlook did not matter. For Zhong Yi to be able to utter such an amazing gatha, it showed that he was much better than any one of them in terms of enlightenment and wisdom. He should therefore be treated with the utmost respect. Ignoring any other thing, a knowledgeable person would be their teacher. Director Jiang was surprised and asked, Abbot, didn't you say that you won't be receiving any film crews here anymore? The abbot smiled. After exchanging knowledge with teacher Zhong Yi, I have gained a lot. In the past, I was too close-minded. Haha, <laughs> originally there is not a single thing, so where does dust alight? Today had been a long day. Director Jiang also had quite a number of shots that had not been filmed yet. The sky was already dark, so they had to do it tomorrow. Should they go back now and come again tomorrow? Wasn't this a headache? So he did not reject the offer and accept the goodwill of the monastery. He prepared the crew to stay for the night. Zhong Yi had inadvertently planted the seeds of the willow plant. He had wanted to just vent his anger and then leave, but little did he expect that the monastery would change their attitude. They made him a guest and that made Zhong Yi a little embarrassed. In the backyard. There were over a dozen rooms. The place was quiet and there were many plants and flowers in the courtyard. A young monk said, Master, the rooms have been tidied up. Well, almsgivers. You may have your rest now. The abbot said to Director Jiang and everyone else. Director Jiang said, Thank you. There were some misunderstandings earlier. Are those young monks injured badly? Figuring that he only had only a few damaged pieces of equipment and two people with slight injuries but the other party had four people who were injured rather badly, he realized that their side had not suffered as badly as the hosts. They lost physically and even lost in terms of the knowledge battle. The abbot said in a calm voice, I have checked on them, they are all right. Armsgiver Zhong did not injure them badly. Actually, there's no misunderstanding. It was my disciples who misunderstood my gather and that created all the trouble. Amitba, please do not hold it against us. My disciples were too hot-headed. It was good that Armsgiver Zhong had taught them a lesson. To have been enlightened by him, it might even be a blessing for them. It was clearly them being beaten up. But now, it had become a form of enlightenment. The film crew all looked at Zhong Yi. They knew that teacher Zhong's bluff had exploded into something bigger. But this made them realize more clearly what Zhong Yi could do. In the whole of Beijing, no one would dare say he was better than Zhong Yi in terms of poetry and writings. This man was too talented. Director Jiang said to everyone, go and have a rest. Sleep early tonight, we still have to continue filming tomorrow. Everyone was dismissed. They were all very tired and they went to their own rooms to sleep. Zhong Yi wanted to leave but he was held back by the abbot, armsgiver Zhong, please stay. Oh, is there anything? 
Zhong Yi looked back and blinked. This old monk has an unreasonable request. The abbot smiled blandly and pointed at the stone tablet at the front yard, can you confer a few words for us? I would like it to be your gatha from just now. This will guide our disciples in future. Zhong Yi coughed, it's not that suitable, is it? What's wrong with it? The abbot did not think much of it, please grant my request. The young monks also looked at Zhong Yi. Zhong Yi thought about it for a while and acceded. He took a pen and wrote it down. On the night itself, the abbot instructed for Zhong Yi's words to be inscribed onto the stone tablet. He did not remove his earlier gatha, he left it there. This showed how big of a heart he had. The stone tablet was awe-inspiring, every word was cutting. The body is a body tree, the mind is a mirror bright, never stop dusting and wiping, lest dust alight. By origin, there is no body tree, nor is there a bright mirror. Originally, there is not a single thing, where does dust alight? In Zhong Yi's world, Shunxiu and six patriarch master Huaining's exchange in the Platform Sutra miraculously appeared in this world. However, the conversation between the two masters no longer existed in this world. The lead actors had changed to Zhong Yi and one of Qingshan Monastery's abbot. Chapter 198, You Dare to Believe Zhong Yi's Words? The next day. Early in the morning. There were clanging noises outside. Right, nice expression. Pass. Director, let's do it again. I think my lips twitched so I'm not satisfied with it. Actually it's already very good. All right then, let's do it again. Everyone, pay attention. Action. In a room in the backyard of the Qingshan Monastery, Zhong Yi was woken up near the fire pit. After putting on his clothes, Zhong Yi went out. As they were filming in the front yard, the cameras were already set up. Hey, teacher Zhong, you have woken up? An actress named Xiaoyan greeted with a smile. I just woke up. Why didn't anyone call me? Everyone is already awake, but there I was sleeping. It's so inappropriate. Zhong Yi was feeling a bit embarrassed. He had actually went to bed at 1 a.m. last night. He was not slacking but because the abbot was too wicked. He kept getting Zhong Yi to discuss Buddhist verses with him and Zhong Yi had no way of turning him down. Only after discussing all night with the old monk was he let back to his room. Hence, he woke up very late. The assistant director laughed, it's all right. There are no scenes for you, so we filmed the later parts first. Although Zhong Yi had helped the film crew yesterday, but he did not put on airs. He immediately found a sword, all right, then I'll take the opportunity to practice. We definitely must finish filming it today. No, there's no need. The assistant director stopped him. The martial arts director also came forward, director Jiang has already said. We will change your motions. Since we know you are a real martial arts practitioner, these movements do not suit you well, so we will make an exception for you. When the time comes, you will just use new movements. This was equivalent to changing the script for Zhong Yi. Zhong Yi exclaimed, isn't that a lot of trouble? Not a bit. The assistant director said, go have breakfast first. Zhong Yi saw a few food boxes still unopened. He walked over and ate it. It was all vegetarian. It did not even have any eggs and was probably in consideration of the monastery and they had gotten it delivered in the morning. As he ate, Zhong Yi looked at the filming not far away. It was Yao Jintsai's scene, where he was acting as a Taoist priest. He was fighting with a few monks. One of the monks was an actor from the filming crew, while the remaining two were monks from the Qingshan monastery. He had seen them yesterday. He did not expect the abbot to let the monks from the monastery aid in the acting scene. It seemed like the verse, originally there is not a single thing, where does dust alight, had greatly moved him. He went from meditating to one who tried to gain insight into Buddhist studies. The stone tablet was erected in front of him. Quite a number of the crew were relishing about it. They were pointing and discussing it. Some even took pictures as a remembrance. Some of the new staff and actors that came today were confused. The others, who were here the previous night, pointed in the eating Zhong Yi's direction. They retold the events happily. After the newcomers heard this, they were all extremely shocked. With the scenes filming done, the scene was changed back to the mountainside from last night. 
Little Zhong, please prepare. Director Jiang said to Zhong Yi. All right, Zhong Yi responded and went to have an exchange with the martial arts director. Indeed, the actions this time were not so wide open and was very consistent with Zhong Yi's actual combat motions. Quick, stable, ruthless and was less showy. After Zhong Yi practiced a few times, he said, got it. All right, we are about to begin. Director Jiang sat behind camera number one. However, now with Zhong Yi acting smoothly, the actor opposite him was having troubles. He too had been acting in action films for many years and all the movements he knew were the showy ones. He had to react to how Zhong Yi fought, so he could not immediately match him. After more than 20 minutes was he barely able to keep up with Zhong Yi's rhythm. Finally, director Jiang raised his hand. This scene had passed. Zhong Yi was sweating. The next scene immediately followed. It was also the last time he was appearing as he would be killed by a villain. An hour later, Zhong Yi's part was completed. Teacher Zhong, you've worked hard. A stage manager passed a towel to him. Thanks. Zhong Yi took it and wiped his sweat before taking off his costume and changed into his clothes. Since he was done with the filming, Zhong Yi bade farewell to director Jiang, Yao Jiantsai and company. As he was leaving, something worthy of comment happened. Knowing that Zhong Yi was leaving, director Jiang did not say anything but tell him that they could work together if the chance arose. It was Yao Jintsai who was very warm with Zhong Yi. He sent him down the mountain with his arms around his shoulders. The two of them had become good friends despite their ages after a day of interaction. Both of their tempers matched each other. Finally it was Qingshan Monastery's abbot. He was no longer meditating today and instead sent Zhong Yi all the way down little Qingshan. They even discussed Zen studies along the way. At the same time, a video suddenly appeared online. It was unknown how it became viral as the click rate began to climb. It did not seem like it could stop. When living, sit, don't lie. When dead, lie down, don't sit. How can a set of stinking bones be used for training? You, almsgiver, you know Zen verses? Let us exchange our knowledge on verses. With the wind blowing, the flag flaps. Do you say the wind is moving or the flag is moving? Of course the wind is moving. The flag is moving? Then what is moving? The world is moving? It's your heart that is moving. To see a world in a grain of sand. And a heaven in a wild flower. Hold infinity in the palm of your hand. An eternity in an hour. Aren't you afraid of descending into hell? If I don't descend into hell, who will? By origin, there is no body tree. Nor is there a mirror bright. Originally there is not a single thing. Where does dust alight? There were scenes that had clearly been edited out of the video. They were either unsightly scenes or scenes that had the filming crew cursing. However, there was not many overall changes. The matter last night was entirely recorded. It was easy to tell that it was someone from the film crew of The Great Pugilistic World who uploaded it. The video's name was Little Qingshan's Zen Exchange. Fierce. It's so enjoyable. Propping. The video is too awesome. Is this real or not? How can a layman cause a monk to be dumbfounded? Hey, wait a moment. This person, why does he look like teacher Zhong Yi? What do you mean looks like? It's none other than John Yi. F asterisk asterisk K, when did he join the filming crew of The Great Pugilistic World? And he's even filming a movie? He switched careers again? Ha ha ha, teacher Jong is still as gifted as ever. Too awesome. That bunch of monks sure were unlucky. You can cross Zen verses with anyone but teacher Jong. That fellow is well known to be a notorious sharp tongued poet. Look at the gather. The face smacking was too brutal. Especially that last line, by origin, there is no body tree. I got a kick hearing that. My hair even stood up. Man, teacher Zhong even knows Buddhist and Zen studies? What doesn't Zhong Yi know? The title Omnipotent Zhong isn't given in vain. I think we should call teacher Zhong, Bold Zhong. To beat monks in front of their monastery. First he beat them physically, then he smacked their faces. 
What boldness is this? Ha ha. Others might not dare to, but Teacher Zhong has no such pressure. Teacher Zhong Yi's boldness has always been off the charts. Classic. Zhong Yi's gather is so classic. Why is this discussion so popular? Who is Zhong Yi? Previous poster, go search yourself. Can't be bothered to explain. It's clear you are not from Beijing. In Beijing, who doesn't know face smacking Zhong? Forever supporting face smacking Zhong. Forever supporting bold Zhong. Teacher Zhong, I love you too much. The video was pushed higher and higher. By the end of the day, it alarmed many Buddhist researchers and esteemed monks. A Buddhist researcher rejected Zhong Yi's gatha completely, a layman, a ignorant laity dares to act atrociously in front of a clean monastery? And so many people are supporting him? What sort of state of mind is this? I have seen the gathers. It can't be said to be bad, nor can it said to be wrong, but in Zen studies, how is there any right or wrong, good or bad? All of you have put Zhong Yi on too high a pedestal. I really don't believe such an unsettled and short-tempered person can have such profound understanding in Buddhist studies. He's just a demagogue. Previous poster, I bought a watch last year. We all can tell how awesome is it, but you can't. Still a Buddhist studies researcher? What bullsh asterisk t have you researched all this years? We don't know. I think you are the one who doesn't know. If you know, give us a few gathers. Just because teacher John is not a monk, so whatever he said is wrong. If these gathers were said by some Buddhist master, would you be bullsh asterisk ting here? You would definitely be praising it as, good. What crap. I've already seen through you bunch of experts. Many people began cursing. Every time John Yi's works were released, it would attract many criticisms from specialists or experts. It was unknown if they really were worth their salt or not. This sequence of events had already irritated everyone. The facts had proven that John Yi's works were very recognized and loved by the people. At this moment, a master stood forward. This master had quite a status in the field of Buddhism. He was not a so called expert but a real esteemed monk. This esteemed monk replied on Weibo, I am inferior to Armsiva Jong's tremendous wisdom and virtue. What? Even the master says he's inferior? Is teacher Jong really so awesome? The master has already said so. He already said how wise and virtuous he is. I see how anyone dare doubts him. Jong Yi is really defying the heavens. I know this master. Look at the Weibo verification. He is an esteemed reverend monk. It was the information age, so even monks kept pace with modern times and were on the web. It was nothing strange. After the master finished, there were immediately many Buddhist disciples who forwarded and liked the post. Finally. A person posted a comment as if at a loss whether to laugh or cry. A few days ago, when teacher John was leaving the television station, didn't he recite a poem while the reporters were interviewing him? Something about inside a small house hidden away, he seeks a unified life to obey, why care at all it be it winter, summer, spring or fall, that's bullsh asterisk t. What is he hiding away from? It has just been a few days, and teacher Jong has stirred something up again? Why can't I f asterisk asterisk king see a tiny bit of why care at all it be it winter, summer, spring or fall? Ha ha ha, you dare to believe teacher Jong Yi's words? Man, that's true. Chapter 199, Zhong Yi's Compilation Signing Event. Two days later. Shidan, Beijing Book Building. In front of a long table, Zhong Yi was sitting there smiling with an autograph pen. He was surrounded by the staff of the publishing house as well as the book building's employees. Some of them were selling the books while others were helping maintain order. The banner was very conspicuous. It was the grand opening of Zhong Yi's new book, Zhong Yi's compilation, signing event. Of course, the adjective grand was just added on. There were not that many people, but there wasn't that few either. Teacher Zhong. Please sign this for me. Let's take a picture together. Ah, I finally met him in person today. That's right, he's much more handsome than on TV. Teacher Zhong, I'm your hardcore fan. Don't squeeze. I came first. I want the autograph first. 
this event was organized jointly by his publishing house as well as the book building. This morning, anyone who bought John Yee's compilation could get his signature by queuing up. As a result, he became busy, thank you, thank you for everyone's support. This was the first time he was having close-up interactions with his fans. Zhong Yi was also feeling very excited. Once upon a time, he could only see someone signing event from far away. All he saw was other celebrities being surrounded by people. Now, Zhong Yi had also obtained this opportunity. He had finally reached the point of giving others his signature. He could not help but sigh for everything seemed like a dream. Teacher Zhong, please sign on my clothes. A youth dressed like a shut-in looked he liked Zhong Yi a lot. Even his clothes were printed with Zhong Yi's poem, If you do not leave me, I will always be at your side until the end of life. This was the slogan of Zhong Yi's fan club. It appeared like he was one of them. Zhong Yi did not hesitate. He was very grateful for the fans who had supported him all this time. He quickly changed to a watercolor pen and signed his name on the youth's back. After him, there were even more fans who gave a wide variety of requests. Some wanted the autograph on their hands. Some wanted the autograph on their necks. Some even wanted Zhong Yi to sign on the clothes on their chest. It was a woman in her twenties with average looks but a particularly hot body. She probably came with friends. There were many girls around her giggling. The woman with a hot body blinked at Zhong Yi and then pointed at her chest. Zhong Yi nearly spurt out blood. Big. So big. The big-breasted woman came over and pointed at her chest, Teacher Zhong, please sign here. The staff of the publishing house were at a loss whether to laugh or to cry. However, they had organized many events like this, so they had encountered this several times. They were not surprised for there were all sorts of fans. Zhong Yi was decisive. He stood up with the watercolor pen in hand but he was still embarrassed to really sign on her breast. He signed on her collarbone. He still took note of possible ramifications. After all, there were so many people watching. However, even though he did so, his hand still slipped. The female fan's breast was too big, so it was hard to gauge the distance. After he finished writing the word, Yi, the final stroke went vertically down, but with Zhong Yi's pen trembling the vertical line flicked all the way to the fan's huge breast. With that slip, the pen tip clearly had fallen into an area full of flesh. Thank you. The female fan was very happy as she showed off her clothes to her girlfriends. Afternoon. The signing event had ended. John Yi drove to his parents' home. He felt like he was covered in sweat. The morning was like a war. It had tired him out. However, what was worth mentioning was that the sales of the compilation was not bad. It had lived up to the price of the publishing house buying off his royalties. And he had seen many of his passionate fans today. He could converse with them face to face instead of through the internet. It was a good feeling. At home. He first took a shower before he ate. Mom brought the dishes out, eat, eat. Look how my son is starving. Seriously that publishing house. You were busy all day, but they did not prepare a meal for you? Zhong Yi grabbed a manchu and gnawed on it, they were also busy. They probably could return only in the afternoon. Look at your table manners. Mom laughed, you are already a superstar and you can even hold a signing event. Pay attention to your image and have the bearing and demeanor of a celebrity, understand? Dad also said, what celebrity? Is there a need to act at home? Mom rolled her eyes at him, what do you know? Celebrities are all fake. Dad educated his son, don't listen to her. Don't let fame go to your head. You should be what you are. Don't be cocky. Dad, I understand. Zhong Yi naturally understood. Mom curled her lips and ignored her husband. She sat down and scooped food for her son, eat more. Knock, knock, knock. Someone was knocking on the door. Who is it? Mom went to open the door. It was their neighbor, Auntie Liu. She smiled. My husband said he happened to see Little Yi come home around the corner just now. Hey, Little Yi is eating? Zhong Yi put down his chopsticks, Auntie Liu. He just came back. 
he had a signing event in the morning. Mom said proudly. Auntie Lou chuckled, I came here for this matter. All of you know my husband likes to write. He especially loves Little Yee's poems. He is embarrassed to come over, so he got me to ask. Is there any more of the compilation? There are plenty. Mom spoke for her son. Auntie Liu said, that's great. By the way, Little Yi must sign it for me. This book needs to be properly kept. John Yi of course did not disagree. He stopped eating, got a book of John Yi's compilation from his bag and signed on it. After sending Auntie Liu away, he returned to his meal. Mom was extremely pleased, look at my son. He doesn't let me down. Dad switched on the television, that's because I educated him well. If he had learned from you, who knows what would happen. Hey, enough of that. What did you teach him? Since he was young, wasn't I the one getting him to study? Mom cut him off and said to Zhong Yi, son, how many books do you have? Leave them for me and sign all of them. Neighbors would probably come these few days, so I definitely have to give them a few books. I also need to give some to my colleagues. Give me how many you have. Don't hide them. Got it. Zhong Yi was done eating. Today's signing event had given Zhong Yi the sweet taste of being a celebrity. It made his decision on becoming the number one celebrity of this world even more firm with the hot sales of Zhong Yi's compilation, and with the movie, The Great Pugilistic World, done filming. They were in the midst of promotion with a few promotion pics with Zhong Yi dressed in ancient costumes at the corner of the poster. His name was also listed on the cast list. With the popularity of the video, Little Qingshan's Zen Exchange, his exposure had once again increased these few days. The decrease in his popularity the past few days had finally stabilized. But it had only stabilized. It was not enough. Zhong Yi did not want to stay on the same spot. He needed to find a move that allowed his popularity to increase and last for a long while. He was frowning with urgency about this. Chapter 200, Web TV's Invitation for John Yi Afternoon It was a day off for his parents and they were having an afternoon nap. In the small bedroom, John Yi was lying in his own room, staring blankly at the ceiling deep in thought. He felt that his career was now at a dead end. There was constant drama happening. After his departure from the television station, there had been no job offers that could further his career objectives. Having odd jobs and incidents here and there was not the solution, this kind of fame was not sustainable in the long run and he would spiral back down into being an unknown. This was not what Zhong Yi wanted to see happen. If he were to depend on such incidents to maintain his popularity, firstly, he would become too tired. Secondly, when would he ever break through into the D-list rankings? The official website had now placed Zhong Yi as the top few in the E-list celebrity rankings. Even after launching his book and filming a movie, it did not let him advance into the D-list. This showed how difficult it was. The celebrities who were placed above him were no pushovers too. They were also garnering more and more popularity every day. If he couldn't even advance into the D-list, then there was no point mentioning how Zhong Yi wanted to head towards being an A-list celebrity or even international star. This would become an unattainable dream. Keep thinking of it. He couldn't keep being like this forever. But where could he go? Where could he go? Zhong Yi still had no direction. Singing? It still wasn't the right time yet. His singing prowess was not yet good enough. To go the direction of being a singer at this point in time would be making a fool of himself. How about writing songs for others? That would be killing the goose that laid the golden eggs. Although it could help maintain his popularity for the time being, it was not a long-term solution. Everyone will pay attention only to the singer, not the composer or lyricist. No matter how awesome you were, you couldn't possibly become an A-list celebrity by writing songs only. You wouldn't even make it into the C-list. Acting? With his acting skills, wasting all that film as a minor supporting role and spending a full day just to barely do a passable take, it was better not to think of doing it at the moment. Zhong Yi still needed life experience and work experience. He needed to slowly learn and understand all these life lessons. Be a director? Without an inkling fart of qualifications, who would dare let him direct? 
Besides, Zhong Yi didn't even know how to direct. He did not even know how to operate a camera. Write novels? The novel industry also had its limits. Compared to a singer or an actor, it was a small market. Even if Zhong Yi tirelessly wrote a bestseller, a singer who had a lukewarm song would receive much more attention than him as a novel writer, unless he wrote one novel a day and a few hundred novels a year. But that would get him captured and used for scientific research. Television station? No one dared to employ him anymore, so it was a negative. His old job as a radio host? There was too little audience over there. Zhong Yi could not possibly live in the past. Even if he did well there, he might not get into the D-list rankings. The audience base was just not enough. That's it. All his paths were blocked. Zhong Yi was almost crying. Was this his fate? Was there no other way he could move forward? God, don't mess with me like this, really don't do it like this. Maybe God heard his cries for help. Suddenly, he received an unexpected call. A week after Zhong Yi left his job, an unexpected party handed him an olive branch. It was the very sweet voice of a female on the other side. It was probably a woman whose age was not too young, hello, is this Zhong Yi's number? It's me. Zhong Yi said as he laid in bed, you are? The woman laughed, it wasn't that easy to find you. I had to get help from a few good friends before I managed to contact an old leader of yours who gave me your number. Okay, let me introduce myself. My English name is Victoria and I'm the owner, investor, and CEO of Weiwa Company. Our company's main operation is in Web TV. I believe you might have heard of our website before, it's one of the forerunners of this industry. As for me, I am probably much older than you, but you can call me Old Wei or Sister Wei, whichever is fine. It's just a form of salutation. I'm all right with such things. Man, you can have such an English name? Zhong Yi was not really bothered by this, I will call you President Wei, you will look for me for. I have many friends who are devout Buddhists and I myself am also very interested in Buddhist teachings. A few days ago, I was having a discussion with two friends over a meal about your gatha. When I heard it, I became very interested. Only then did I know that there was such a radio host in Beijing. The woman named Victoria continued to speak, I spent an entire night watching you on BTV Arts channels, Zhong Yi's analysis of the Three Kingdoms and I thought that it was really good. The first episode had already captured my interest and then I also went to read your poems. I even listened to Ghost Blows Out the Light from your time at the radio station. I understand that all of these are your original works. Lecture Room was a program that was mainly planned and produced by you. Zhong Yi humbly said, I guess so, but it was also a team effort. He had not expected that by his participation in a movie filming would lead to so many things. It had even attracted the attention of the CEO of a company. She even called him herself. Look at this. There were also benefits caused by all these incidents. Victoria said, our web portal has been doing web TV for over a year now. When I saw your program for the first time, I knew that you were the host that our web TV was looking for. Zhong Yi felt overwhelmed and said, you are praising me too much. How about it? Victoria laughed a little saying, are you interested in coming to develop yourself in the web TV industry? I heard that you have been blacklisted by all the television stations and can't return to that industry anymore. But our side here does not have so many rules like them, as long as you are willing to come, our unit will create a program for you. You are good at program planning, you can decide on a program for yourself. You can also choose what time you want it to be broadcasted at. I will let you recommend your own salary, all of these can be discussed. Ah? Uh, recommend my own salary? Decide on my own program? Choose a time that I want it to be broadcasted at? Zhong Yi thought to himself that with such good treatment, could there be a catch? So he replied, President Wei Yi, are you asking me to create another program like Lecture Room? Although Beijing television station had already fired him, he still had some old friends and an old leader there. Hu Fei had treated him quite well and he was the one who recruited him into the television station despite objections. Zhong Yi would never create a similar program to compete with Hu Fei, Xiao Lu and the others. Victoria replied with an answer that made him feel assured, you are thinking too much. 
I am not intending for you to compete with your old employer. Besides, Lecture Room might be a good program, but its audience demographics is older. Even though some younger people watched it, most of those viewers were above the age of 25. If you put such a program on web TV, it will never work. We have an audience that are in their teens to 30s. This group of people are the main force for web TV. Zhong Yi nodded, so it's like this. Mr. Zhong, you can think it over first. But you should be able to feel my sincerity. I really would like you to join us and develop together with us. Oh right, maybe I need to tell you this first. Our company is based in Shanghai, so you might need to settle down here, we do not have a recording studio over in Beijing at the moment. Victoria said. Okay, I will give it some consideration. All right, then I hope to have good news from you, haha. Thank you for the invitation, I will seriously consider it. After hanging up, Zhong Yi's phone rang again. This time, it was Hu Fei. Little Zhong. Hu Fei asked, just now a friend of mine called to ask for your phone number, I think that a web TV company would like you to join them. Have you replied yet? Zhong Yi said immediately, not yet, I was just about to ask you for your opinion. Is the web TV industry any good? You are a media worker, but you don't know about web TV? Hu Fei said annoyingly. But he still explained, it's actually just a broadcast that is done over the internet, but their programs are richer. There are variety programs, news programs, and even kids' programs. Over in Zhong Yi's previous world, web TV was still an industry in its infancy. It was not really web TV per se, it was just an online portal to the television station's programs. It was just putting the resources and programs of a television station onto the internet so that everyone could view it. But upon hearing Hu Fei's explanation, Zhong Yi understood that this world's web TV was different. It was a lot more matured than his previous worlds. This was the true form of a web TV station. It was similar to television in that they had a program list for the day, it was only delivered over the internet. Its programs were premiere broadcasts and they were not repeated broadcasts from television stations. The advertising model and operating structure were also very advanced and they were administered by the State Administration of Press, Publication, Radio, Film and Television of the People's Republic of China, SARFT. Then, do you think I should go? Zhong Yi asked for his views. Hu Fei said, that will depend on yourself. Right now, no traditional television station would dare to recruit you. Web TV might be the only way for you. There are pros and cons to joining them. The pros are that the audience base is bigger, as there are many netizens. For a really good program, a single episode can have a viewership of a few million. With that, it is already much higher than you being at our arts channel speaking about the three kingdoms. The cons are that there is too much content on the internet, unlike television which only has a few channels and people switch on their TVs just to watch television programs. The internet is different because people do not necessarily choose to watch web TV when they are online. Some like to watch movies, some watch animations, some choose to read novels, some watch short clips. Therefore, a successful web TV program would need to stand out. They do not only compete with other web TV programs, they also compete with other internet content. The pressure is huge so it is not easy to stand out. Zhong Yi had some thoughts. Hu Fei laughed, but who does not know about little Zhong's capabilities? Other people might not stand out in this vast ocean even if they had forever to do so, but you are different. I believe that you can do it. Thanks, brother Hu. Make your own decision. Sure. I will think about it again. After the conversation ended, Zhong Yi was lying on his bed and massaging his temple. He had a headache. There were pros and cons, should he go or not? A dilemma. It was really hard to decide. A celebrity was not someone that people should be so envious of. On the surface, it looked really easy. But in reality, only they themselves knew how difficult it was. A wrong step would end careers. Every step could only be taken after careful consideration. How carefully do they have to consider? Just look at Zhong Yi and you would understand. Do you know why Zhong Yi always scratches his head? Do you know why Zhong Yi always has his hands on his head? Do you know why Zhong Yi always puts his hands through his hair at night unable to sleep? That's right. 
it's because he was plagued by dandruff issues. Can support us completed novel house in link below clip. Thank you for coming and love the sharing story.